<laughs> yeah. I mean, shit. I think what drew the line for me was Joey, Joey bouncing. I think the way what? Joey, the way Joey left, is kind of what was the done deal for me. Oh, what drew the line for me, really? Where I was done. Well, I was done for years and years and years. Right. I was really done after like OI4K left, really. I mean, if you really want to get technical about I it, mean, I was sort of done after that. I was going to say, when, well, like, I, I mean, Dave was in and out, but Jake was permanently gone. Yeah, and then Dunn left. Then I JT think that's Dunn when it left, went downhill. And Star was like sort of in and out. That's when Star was really, um, Star was really uh, going overseas a lot more. Well, me and you, so me and you talked about this back in the day. It got really bad when um, Star was being booked, and then all of a sudden, oh yeah, well that t- that uh, feud ain't gonna work. Bye. It's like you had a white hot feud with him and Grissom. And you just scrap it? They had a white hot feud with him and Gresham. Um, he they basically like DJ was the one that really screwed up the juicy product. Yeah, I mean, oh, no, let's face it, no pun intended. They were over as fuck. Oh, they were. I know. They were, and then like you know, I four K left, and then after. Then after Tremont had the whole coming of age story, they did nothing with him. <laughs> oh, Nina! <laughs> and then they had him. Then they had him turn heel for some stupid reason, and that was a complete DJ booking. I mean, I remember when I asked Tremont about it. I'm like, "So your heel turn?" He's like, "That was completely DJ." I liked the idea. Of, I liked the idea of the heel turn, but it did nothing. You had it to was, see, yeah, you, you know why see, you know why it did nothing? Because DJ. Uh, no. Because he's your top baby face in the company. Right. I mean, basically people knew him growing up. Yeah. Like, and then you're trying to tell then you're trying to turn him heel, it doesn't work. Like the idea would have gone over fine, but you you just oh yeah, no, we're just gonna say fuck you to the fans. But yet, but here's the thing. Yeah. What's what's funny is is right down the road, and that's the other thing too. Oh yeah, we we have Tremont turning heel, but yet right down the road you had Gangone doing the exact same fucking thing with the HOG and doing well, it a I'm, thousand I'm not times better. At that. No, I'm saying, but see, doing see, it. See, see, was, I'm not looking at all this. You're looking at all this other stuff. I'm not. I didn't want to bring that up. All right. let's, let's just keep this about CZW because this is like, oh, well, this guy turned. No, well, no, 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 no. What I'm trying to say is, is that was going on there. DJ was plucking it from there and put trying to put it on his show. That's what I mean. Not really. Yeah. DJ tried. No, DJ tried to turn. He, DJ tried to turn Cremont heel because he didn't. Because I guess he felt he wasn't the guy. Oh. Yeah, and he thought, "Oh, we'll do this. We'll we'll get this edge," and it never worked, and it never was gonna work. Went over like a fart in church. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, all right. Um, no intro. Uh, all right. So, yeah. so before we start, before we start, we talked on Really Hill about. Uh, Lufesto and everything, and everybody is talking about their being burned by DJ Hyde and CZW. So, allow me to pile on, if you will, please, listeners. Go for it. Go for it. If you so, I mean, here's what I wrote. This is on Facebook. So, I think a lot of people who tried to work for or even help CZW have stories and have been burned by Hyde. So, here's mine. It starts back in 2014. CZW was looking for people with an art background to do CZW merch, DVD, poster, DVD, or poster designs. So I emailed them. All right. 
I'm hearing an echo. No, that was that was my phone. Sorry. Keep yeah. going. Sorry. All right. So I so I emailed them because Tyler Tyler told me he's like, yeah, the liberty with the art background, and everybody liked my stuff. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I emailed them, met Deej, and he told me vaguely, and I stressed the term vaguely, what he wanted for a T design, which around TOD time, he was going with this Lariat God thing, which seriously made me want to roll my eyes, which I didn't, which I almost did at the interview. Lariat's up, Lariat's down. Yeah, but... <laughs> Yeah, that was one thing, but he went with Lariat God. I, I remember, I remember the Lariat God. Yeah, so, but here's the Lariat God thing, which maybe you want to roll my eyes, but there was something else that he said in the promo that I felt resonated better with the fans than Lariat God, which was Lariat your face off. Remember that? Yeah, for something like him, that would have worked. As a yeah, Larry. So, so I made a quick mock. And showed some fans I was friends with, and they loved it. And they were like, I'd rock that easy. Even though it's DJ Hyde. Remember the shirt I sent you? Yeah, I remember. The, dude, I remember the shirt. Yeah, with the blood and the distress text and all that. Like, yeah. Larry at his face off. Yeah. And people were like, hold. I remember I sent it to Stauffer. He's like, I hate DJ, but I'd rock that. Because <laughs> it's not. Because yeah, here's the people, thing. Because it's not just, okay, yeah, it's a DJ Hyde shirt. No, that's a wrestling shirt. It yeah, works. It, it works. It works over more than just one statement. It would work over more uh, than right. one. So getting back, yes. So I made a quick mock show friends with they and they loved it, and I rocked that easy. So I sent it to him, and he was like, "Eh, it's okay, but below average." Yeah. So I, yeah. So I go to TOD a week later, and see this Larry God T he had, and it was pretty damn similar. Minus the blood, and he, they they switched out my sans serif hat and Schweiler with a ton of work that I did to it to distress it, like by my terms. Pretty in other much words, I didn't say... take something off. In other words, I didn't take something off Defont.com and just roll with it. Right. It didn't look like he made it out of Teesprings. Dude, dude, he made that on Defont.com. I know. I've seen. You know I remember I know the shirt. That? I remember the shirt. He, yeah, you know how I know that? Because I typed in Lariat God on Defont.com <laughs> and just looking, and I found the exact fucking font. So, whatever. I was like, oh. I was like, and I'm below average. Uh, okay. And then I was told afterwards that I'd get a new project and a call. Basically, he was going to keep me up or whatever. Never got anything. Whatever. Fast forward, and I get in with PW Ponderings to do a CZW-centric podcast. Since I was also writing for P PW Ponderings on CZW at the time. And, what was it? Since I was also doing We Want Blood, a wrestling podcast, and had the wrestlers who I did have on it say they had a great time. Because remember remember that? Like, guys are talking about the CZW locker room. If you want to go on a podcast, go on We Want Blood. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. So, we're a great time. So, PW Ponderings is all about that, and I was also writing about CZW at the same time. So, it was forwarded to Wiggy of Pantsless Radio on PW Ponderings. Yep. And we're getting this ready to go. It was originally going to be me, Wiggy, and Emma. I remember. We gonna, I remember yeah, the we original format. CZW. Right. So, we... And we yeah, the, we're getting in with this. She had more of an in with CZW so we could get a lot more wrestlers, and I was stoked. And I was stoked for this completely. We needed a names, and I came up with Bleeding Black and Yellow based off of what a lot of wrestlers always said in the CZW promos. Wiggy loved it, and we were set to have our first guest, DJ. Needless to say, on the day of the podcast to be recorded, he's not going to be able to be on. Whatever. A day later, I get a text from Wiggy that Deej wanted to have his own to have or own the show on CZW.com and the streaming site. But I was out. He just wanted her to do it. But he loved the name of the show. Of fucking course he did. 
because of my friendship and respect for Wiggy, I said, go ahead and use it. Wish you well. I had a podcast on PW Ponderings dubbed the Hardcore Roundtable, but never really got a set lineup. And as Deej kept fucking up CCW and a lot of the wrestlers, I knew Lee, Star, Dunn, OI4K, Tremont, etc. left. I lost interest and also started to just hate it. I tried to make this short, but failed. Yeah, whatever. But yeah, fuck him. And the interview at the Academy, he did bully a trainee, by the way. And, and that's what I have to say about that. Hey, uh, and John, you know what the moral of the story is? What's that? After all of that Chris just talked about, we have this. That started this. Ah. Because, wait, the other thing was, and Chris, tell me if I'm wrong. I jumped on with you to do the football and the hardcore round table. Yeah, the hardcore round table. You, you, we needed, were doing, you needed help. Uh, we you needed the help. The round table, I was doing uh, Trips and Hack Show, which turned into the Trips and Monster show, show after Hack lost interest. Yep, so. and, then, and then spun off. We mean you were doing the football show and the hardcore round table back to back because you needed help with the hardcore round table, and I knew a little bit about CZW. Right, and we needed a show for the football show. And I was show. like, how about the nerd zone? And Based just and the then red the red zone, yeah. And then the hard the me and you both kinda said fuck CZW. Me and you had a good chemistry. And it's just hundred and sixty five episodes later, we're here we are. Three and a half <laughs> almost three and a half years later. <laughs> yeah, we tried to do it on season I think I told Chris finally. I was like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. I, I I will because he had a working relationship with CZW. I'm like I will seriously damage that if I continue this. Show. Oh, dude, me and you. When they let, I think the Remember last the last show <laughs> where I basically threw them under the bus. Completely? Wolf of Wall. You mean Wolf of Wall Street? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Wolf of Wall. What the fuck was the actual show called? Yeah, whatever. It was. <laughs> whatever it was. But he kept. But you and, remember, I, yeah, you they, remember when I basically threw them under the bus and shat all over their show, dude. Me and you literally spent an hour. We're like, we almost. We're like, this is a live show, but me and you both looked at each other and said, "We can't post this." <laughs> like, uh, me and I you. I sent it to him. I sent it to him. He's like, "Are you sure?" I'm like, "It's gonna kill your relationship." But yeah, if you want it, this is the last one. And he's like, "Okay." <laughs> Like, me and you both looked at it and was like, we, I, I mean, just out of a business representative, we can't post this. Yeah. And then it's like, you know what, just let's see what he says, because me and you destroyed that show. Oh, we destroyed it. Like, J-Cat was even like, that's pretty vicious. <laughs> J-Cat was proud of me. He's like, that was vicious. I like it. Yeah, I mean... But I was like, I'm not going to shit all over CZW because that's J-Cat's gig. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. What what were we going to watch? It was like, okay, CZW's there. Great. It's It was a thing. It's n- Listen, it's not part of the Big Four anymore. It's been dead buried. I, I, really, the Big Four is not the... The Big Indie Four is not even anywhere remote around anymore besides the coronavirus i'm saying when they were still running czw yeah, that, are... that's why a lot of wrestlers work for czw based off the past and the history and the name it had from the zandig days john you know what the big four of indie wrestling was right uh, i forget it's been so long ring of honor czw uh, chikara uh, and, P- and pwg and pwg, and PWG. And PWG. Those were the big. Those were the big tech. The quote unquote big four of an indie promotion because they were one of the first. They were like the original four that came that really were out of the territory to the indie fed. And then, and then, uh, and then, if you go along, you have IWA Mid South, IWA Deep South, um, AAW, AIW. Yeah. IWA. Oh, Rev Pro. Wasn't Jersey All Pro in that, too? Jersey All Pro was kind of that second wave. Yeah, they were in the second wave. But, like, the original four that ever, like, if if you, 
that normal fits. Chikara was that, Ring of Honor was that, CZW, and then PWG was your West Coast. Right, and the East, basically Chikara, Chikara, CZW, Ring of Honor, all were like a piece of ECW. Yeah, that just split up to ten. That split and was like, okay, you want you want wrestling, but you want your characters. You go to Chikara. You want your insane finishes and high flying. You went to ROH. You want your fucking blood, guts, and war. You go to CZW. Right. And you want your you know want your vulgarity you go to CZW. Yeah. The Ring of Honor was all honorable, remember? Yep. Oh, the honor. Yeah, the code of honor. Yep. I mean it was something cool. And unfortunately Rob Feinstein touched the kid and that killed his thing. He touched the kid and he liked it. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you think Maxwell Jacob Friedman, Friedman. changed his name? MJ Fuckboy. Yep. <laughs> and I remember the first time in CZW, Maxwell Jacob Feinstein Dude, I heard... got rode for that one. Oh, I remember that. Oh. Oh. I remember I brought that up once at a show. He's like, it's no longer my name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, good, good answer. And people have asked me, is he related to him? I go, I think so. Some form. I, I remember that. Is he his kid? I mean, uh, oh, he, he oh. had nothing. He wanted nothing to do with him. <laughs> and also, MJF even came out and said that um, with the toxic culture in CZW, it was also anti-Semitism. I mean, Boy, David Starr hit the nail on the fucking head on We uh, Want Blood. Didn't I, he? Yeah, yeah, he did. I mean, you think about it, CZW. Let's just list off in the last five years, and I'm saying five years, the people they had, they, they I mean, fuck, Sammy, OI4K, the rat, uh, Desmond and the rascals, the rascals, yeah, the rascals. it was all Scarlet and Graves, but oh, yeah, Scarlet and Graves, the rat, well, no, because uh, Miguel was there too, he left, mm-hmm. Star done. Um, the Beaver Boys. Masada came, Masada Masada left, came and, back, came back left and left again. again. Uh, Dickinson. Yep, Dickinson won't work for him anymore. No, uh, you said Masada. Uh, I mean, shit, the Beaver Boys, even though now they're part of the Dark Odor, I mean, they were they were there then coming back. Three quarters of AEW. <laughs> uh, Brody Lee. Yeah, I was going to say, no, that wasn't five years, though. Um, yeah, literally half of half or three quarters of fucking half AEW. Of AEW and a quarter of the NXT roster yeah. worked for CZW. Oh God! Uh, I mean, it wasn't like I mean CZW was the shit back then, dude. Then even was, when they were, even when they then were, then it turned into DJ. You know, trying to put himself over all the time. Even when they were, I mean, fuck Oni Loken. Oni Loken. Yep, Oni working. Yeah, Biff. Biff, yeah. Uh, shit, dude. It was one of those things where CZW, even when they, even when DJ was dialing back the blood and the hardcore, he still had decent matches. Best of the best was a go- was one of their greatest was was one of their big four. Let's face it, that was one of their four tournament shows that was always good. Yeah, until he shit on it and put see, put best of the best on WrestleMania Mania, weekend, and where which, Dave Christ won, and they did nothing with him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, dude, you had guys that went in there. Fuck, um, Juice Robinson was there for best of the best. Because you remember, best of the best used to be like a springboard. Like, you won best of the best off, so and you were automatically in like the world title picture, basically. Yeah. And you then were... that killed that. I mean, they won. They gave Drake the win one year. Well, that was because he, he was leaving, and he should have won it. And like he was leaving. Times over. And he was leaving. Mm-hmm. That helped. And then they, and then they had David Starr win it, and that was sort of. And then they had Starr win the title, but like, it was when CZW was dead, and Starr hasn't been back since. Dude, <laughs> dude, literally the year before when Grisham won it. The crowd was white. I I remember. I had fucking goosebumps. The crowd was white hot. I remember the crowd was white hot. For Star. Like, the crowd was like, oh, they were ready to jump the guardrails to kill Grisham when he won. 
Yeah, and then they did nothing with it. And they and he left for Japan two weeks later. Well, it didn't. I mean, he went for after Japan, but they could have brought him back. No, but that's what but I'm saying. I'm saying did. they brought him back for. They never did, and it turned nothing, and that's when Star went to England. What? They brought him back for Cage. And that's when Star destroyed the fucking statue. The, the trophy. Yeah. Yeah, and then they did nothing and, with that. Nope. And then that was dead and buried because it's like, okay, bye. Well,. I have a feeling they did nothing with that because I don't think the guys really were that high on work in there anymore. No, I think I. I All right, but were... yeah, that was that was my personal story. And seriously, I'm past the whole. I hope CZW can come back and be good. No, fuck them. It, it will Chill only. It. Chill it. Here's the thing. Chill it. it. Will... Let it die. If CCW comes back, it has to be without any of the DJ Hyde staff. I was just about to say that. Maven Beckley. None of it. It has, it has combat to, zone right. It has to come back either one or two ways. It has to come back as a almost a G with a without anybody. Without Maven, without D, any form of DJ gone. That has to be gone. But at the same time, too, it either has a choice to go one or two ways. Either do you go the GCW way, where you go back to what the roots were, or do you go to pure wrestling again, like you did in the in the uh, about five six years ago? You can mix. Yeah, you can mix it. Just it has to be out of anything having to do with DJ Hyatt. I would love to see WSU come back under new management. Yeah. Oh, hell nothing yeah. Nothing to do with DJ Hyde. Nothing to do with DJ Hyde. No, Maven Bentley. I used to like Maven Bentley, but he's in this as well, and he's washed his hands of it. So, no. Fuck CCW. I'm done. If you're a CCW wrestler, work elsewhere. If you are a WSU, if you are a woman who thinking who is thinking about working for WSU, don't. Don't work for WSU. Try to talk to Colin and Synergy and get. I was just about. I was. Oh, he's. Uh, I'll talk to you off air about that. Because, uh, ugh, this this is no. But go work somewhere where you're respected. Okay, don't fall for the bullshit. Because if you do work there, you're gonna he's gonna sell you tits in your ass, and chances are he's gonna want to cuddle with you in a hotel room or fuck you. So don't work there. Anyway, this is the Nerd Zone. Let's talk some fucking sports. Woohoo! Yes, I am Effin' Ronnie. With me as always. It is I, Trips motherfucking. And NXC, yeah. And? The Zombie Master. We just, we, we started the show off white hot there, John. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> where's Chris? Yeah, where? Go talk to fucking sports. Where's Christian? I don't know. Chris, get, get his ass in here. Well, let's get this one thing out of the way. They, they, uh, Chad Gaspar situation has ended tragically, of course. And we all want to pass our condolences along to his family. Since, you know, he was found today, unfortunately. I they, do have a story. Story about him, if you want to hear it real quick, that's funny. While we get Christian in, uh, so okay, so I was at uh, CTW, change the oh, world, God. change the world wrestling. Uh, so they ended up being at the show because a uh, company that me and Chris, uh, me and John know, and Chris hates, uh, PWS was supposed to be running that day. And canceled their yeah. show. And canceled their show because he couldn't pay for anybody. Yeah. So, the charity show was going on. Colin was able to grab Crime Time, as well as Star, at the, at the show. They did it for free, which was great. Um, coming in, they're sitting next to us because we're doing a podcast while we're doing the whole thing. We're doing, it's me, JP, and D. We're chilling and we're having fun. We're talking to, Ch I'm talking to them, and we're just, Bullshit, and I'm talking to JTG. Sims all of a sudden starts cursing up a storm because because they showed up late. 
<laughs> and Sims right. then all of a sudden screams, is this how you treat your top talent? <laughs> I turn around and go, Sims, your top talent don't show up late, if that's the case. Chad looks at me and goes, what do you want us to do? Fat ass was driving. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you got a point. Uh, but, no, it was... it was. Uh, yeah, yeah. Re- oh, go ahead, sorry. Oh, re- rest in peace, Chad. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it was... You know, you know, it's sad that he was... But he, he did die a hero. And, mm-hmm. you know, he, he risked his life for his son's life, you know, and... You can't ask for. I mean, that 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 right there is the true definition of of hero in my eyes. And oh, definitely. He 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 died saving his son. Yeah, right. He he realized he lived his life. He may not have lived a long life, but he lived his life, and his son hadn't lived yet. So he wanted to make sure his son had a chance at life. So that's to me. He'll he'll be he'll be forever recognized as a hero in my eyes. Yeah. Yep. So. Oh yeah. So, Chris, uh, ESPN decided to put out an article today. Oh, God, here we go. Of the, yep. gr- of the greatest to- uh, starting five for the, NB- for the NBA East. NBA East? Yeah, for the East. The West they're doing tomorrow. Okay, so each so for the East. So East each team. team so hold on. So it's the Sixers. Take a guess who who your 76ers starting five of all time would be. Oh, so it's the 76ers start so it's the 76ers. It's man. no, it's every team. It's every team has a starting five. Oh god. Okay. We're not uh, going to go over every team, but I, I know you're a Sixers fan, so Sixers. All right, starting five of the Sixers. Uh at point guard, we got Allen Iverson. Correct. All right, I'll tell you right now. It's two guards, two forwards, and a center for the All Sixers. Right. So we got Allen Iverson. Correct. Then we got, let's go, shooting guard, right? And it just has guard. It just has It just says guard. It doesn't say shooting guard or anything like that. All right, we'll have Iverson. We have Dr. J. He's a forward, yes. Uh, Chocolate Thunder. Dawkins? Uh, no, nope. Dawkins, Dawkins is not there. there. Nope. Okay, Maurice Cheeks. Nope. Really? Mo <laughs> Cheeks isn't starting five? Oh, when I tell you this five, you're going to be like, oh, okay. Okay, uh, Simmons and Embiid. Nope. <laughs> really? Okay, uh, Wilt Chamberlain, since he was yes. on, in, on the Sixers for a cup of coffee. Yes. Even though he's more a Laker, but yeah. uh, whatever. All right, so we got Wilt. Um, oh, God, please don't tell me Stackhouse. Nope, no, 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 you're good there. Jesus. No Embiid. Okay, no Barkley, Embiid. of course. Yep, Chuck. And you're missing a guard. I know, that's why I was like... You're going to have to go a little back for this one. Oh, God. Not Willis Reed because he was a Nick. No, you would. You want me to tell you? Yeah, go. Hal Greer. What? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Hal Greer. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but no. But no. Um. Gee. All right. Whatever. So. All right. Let me guess. The Chicago Bulls won. This uh, Michael Jordan. Yes. Pippen, yes. Dennis Rod. Yes. Uh, Either Luke Longley or Bill Cartwright. Uh, mm, hold on. Uh, no, no, Cartwright is not on here. Who else did, did the Chicago Bulls sucked before? Well, first you? off, first off, all right. So you have Jordan as a guard, Pippen and Rodman are forwards. You're missing a center <laughs> and another guard. Jordan, Pippen, Rodman. Um, either Ron Harper or B.J. Armstrong. Nope. John Paxson. Nope. You're gonna have to go. You're gonna have to go. No, you're gonna have to go way back for the center and fairly new for the guard. Zach Levine. Nope. What? He has Zach Levine. Isn't. I'll tell you right now. He technically had a cup of coffee. He was supposed to be the next era Jordan if his knees didn't blow out.
That was a big hint. For guard. Yeah. Oh, Derek Rose. Yeah. Really? Derek Rose? Yeah, I, and then uh, your center is Art uh, uh, Gilmore. Art Gilmore? My yeah. God, that was back like during the inception of the Bulls. All right, all right, all right. Guess the Knicks. <laughs> uh, the Knicks? Okay, Patrick Ewing? Yes. John Stockton? Uh, no, Stockton is that not on the be list. Utah. That'd be, he'll be all Utah. No, he's being Starks. He meant Starks, I think. Yeah, John Stark. Starks no. isn't on the list. No, okay. Ewing is there. Of course Patrick Ewing's there. Why wouldn't he be there? Yeah, I don't know. Because <laughs> there's no other center. <laughs> Patrick oh. Ewing, um, Willis Reed. Yep, he's your fo- he's one of your forwards. Of course. It's the, it's the stash and the fro, man. He had the handles. Yep. Phil Jackson. No. Okay. This is easy. The only one I do not agree with is their, th- is their second forward. I'm, 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 oh my god, I'm racking my brain here. Well, I mean, come on. Who are the biggest guys out of... Come on, man, you just need just for men, motherfucker. Willis what? Reed. Willis Reed, he already said. Willis right, Reed so is there. Willis Reed, Patrick Ewing, but yes. Xavier McDaniel. No, um, no Xavier McDaniel. Charles Oakley, ha ha nope, ha. Nope, nope. <laughs> See that, right? Um, yeah, not Stoudemire, Carmelo Anthony. Yes! Are you fucking kidding me? I'm dead. No, no that, that's the one I do not agree with. <laughs> I mean, Mello's good, but he wasn't good for the Knicks. No. Um, Walt Clyde Frazier. Of course, Clyde Frazier. And Earl Monroe round, uh, as the other guard. All right. Dude, okay, okay so you'll love this. The Magic. Hardaway? Hardaway, yeah. O'Neal, Nick Anderson, because Nick Anderson. Yes. Because Magic. You're, you're, yes. And then Howard and McGrady. Howard and McGrady? Jesus Christ. Um, all right, so this is the one that's weird. The Raptors. Lowry, DeRosa, Carter, uh, Kawhi, and Bosch. Damn. Like, talk about fairly recent. Yeah, well, well the Raptors are a recent team, yeah. and they right. sucked forever. So you ready for this? The Bucks. Giannis. Yep. Um. Oh God, that guy who was on the Bucks forever and ever, and he was really good. <laughs> oh. All right, uh, Guau Cinder. Yep, Kareem. Of course, yeah, but he wasn't Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. They Kareem have Abdul-Jabbar. Him. Yeah, they have him as Kareem, hey. but he's gonna. Well, Cinder yeah. was, was in, in Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Yep. Yeah. So Guau Cinder. Um. Oh God. I'm lost. Uh, Oscar Robinson. The big O? The big O. He C- was a Celtic. But he played at the start. He played in Milwaukee. All right. Uh, Moncleef. Sidney Moncleef. Monk, okay. Monk, Monk, yeah. And Ray Allen. Ah. Hmm. Uh, okay, so the Heat. I'll just go this one real quick. The Heat. Tim Hardaway, Wade, LeBron... Alonzo Mourning and Shaq. Jesus. I'm like, dude, these are, because they're like, I started reading these. And guys, I'm like, in, guys in for a cup of coffee. Yeah. I'm interested to see what the Lakers are going to be for tomorrow. Magic and Kobe got to be on there. All right, it'll be Magic, Kobe, James Worthy, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Let me see, Magic. Kobe, James Worthy, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and they'll probably throw LeBron James in there. No, uh, I'm sorry. No Jay West? No Logo? Because, uh, because, well, the thing is, Jerry Jerry West would be good, but the thing is, if you have LeBron, they can put LeBron there, and it's, again, like, you have LeBron, Magic, those be your guards. Yeah. James Worthy. Yeah. Man. Worthy will definitely be there. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I mean, you also have Wilt. Or Wilt Chamberlain. Then you have your forward. You can and you know, Put LeBron at forward. Put Jerry West at guard. There you go. Yeah. So, th- this is a good one. Dude, you were ready for a killer's row right here? The Celtics. 
Oh God, Larry, Larry Bird. Bird. Well, wait, wait, Bob Robert Co. Parrish, Bob Oscar Roberts. No, dude, Ross. dude, yeah, wait, 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 because they left a lot of people off of this. This is all Hall of Famers. Bob Cozy. Bob Cozy. Cozy. John, uh, how do you how? I don't even know how to pronounce his last name. God damn it. What? Uh, he's guard. How? How? John Havlicek. Havlicek. Paul Pierce, Larry Bird, and Bill Russell. Yeah. Then you leave off Robert Parrish, Kevin McHale, Dennis Dude. Scott. <laughs> yeah. Dude, the Celtics are ridiculous. Dude, yeah. Oh, no. I do. You, you leave off Utah Kevin Jazz. Garnett. Carl you know, uh, Malone, would you put into that? For the, the Jazz? Jazz, they, they, oh, they oh, haven't oh, done the West yet, but if you're going to do the Jazz, yeah, you got to have the mailman. you got to have all right, Stockton. All, all, right, you, all right. All time you at Utah Jazz would be Malone, Stockton, um, Donovan Mitchell. Yeah. A, a shooting guard, since they didn't have a shooting guard, that would be the best shooting guard they have. Um, you could throw Rudy Gobert at uh, we're not doubt yeah power forward because that would make Malone small forward, or put Rudy Gobert at center actually. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah, and, and then whatever because the Jazz really didn't have anybody except Malone and Stockton. So no, yeah, the Jazz and. I mean, I just saw that, and I'm like, dude, I heard that because they were saying that on ESPN today, and I'm like, dude, that is going to, that is, a, dude, those are stacked, that's, I mean, yeah, they're supposed to be stacked, but that's fucking great. Oh, yeah. Oh, so remember how we were talking about back, uh, a while back, that they did the uh, top 100 uniforms? Yeah. That was last week. Well, yeah, they finished that, officially. Okay. Uh, let me double check. I want to find what number one was. Jesus Christ! Probably the Yankees. No, it wasn't the Yankees. What? Yankees were two. What the hell beat the Yankees? I mean, I'm yeah, as, I... as much as I hate the Yankees, I do admit they always have had a snazzy uniform. Yeah, and don't worry, it wasn't the Jets or anything like that. All right, so here's the top ten. Top ten, number ten, the current Croatia uniforms, the the checkered p- pattern. Who gives a fuck? The Not... number nine, nineteen sixties San Diego Chargers. You could just say the nineties San Diego Chargers when they went back to the powder blues when Ladanian Tomlinson was there. Yeah, but Not... they're they're saying that the current Chicago Blackhawks. The Chicago Blackhawks Blackhawks have had the same look since the eighties. Next. <laughs> uh, okay, hold on. I was just looking to make sure what number one was. Uh, number seven, the current Niners, or the eighties Niners, or the nineties Niners. You know, the normal Niners. Which one? Which forty Niners? The one from the Joe Montana. The one where, where they had just the red, the red, the red jersey, red with jersey, the white and yeah. the gold pants. Yes. Or are we talking about the Niners when they won the Super Bowl with Steve Young when they did throwbacks? No, it's the eighties. The, the the one pretty much the current one and the eighties one. So the the, the red well, it's not white the current one because the Niners have a little bit more snazz with the current one. It's the current one. Alright, so it's the current one. Whatever, cheap. Yeah. Next. Number six. Notre Dame. Of course. Wait, number six? Yep, number six. I was waiting for that. Wait, wait, number six. I thought you started with the top ten, and we this, got like to se- seven. No, this was this was ten. I'm, I started at ten and go down. All right. Number five, so, the eight. Yeah, number six was uh, was Notre Dame. Well, Notre Dame, it, it makes sense. It's traditional, and you can't go wrong with blue and gold tradition. I honestly thought it would have been higher, but. Number five, the uh, and 80s. also also those helmets, they're reflective as shit. If we did, if they did a gold chrome. Oh my god! Yeah. Uh, 80s Lakers is next. The 80s Lakers are the same as. Uh, well, actually, they're not the same. No, as they're Lakers not. Anymore. Yeah, I was 80s say they, Lakers. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number four, uh, the nineties North Carolina jersey. The 90s, it's the same one as the road jersey they have today. Yeah. Number three, the Yankees. Number three? Yep. 
<laughs> so there are two better than the Yankees. Okay, I got Number it. Number two, the current Montreal Canadiens. Oh, go fuck yourself. Next. <laughs> oh, wait. Wait, because get ready for this. Because number one, the Raiders. The what? The Raiders. The shitty ass Raiders uniforms. I that see. unless they have somebody, that unless they have somebody of any value, like when Antonio Brown was there, they couldn't sell a jersey to save their life. Raiders. <laughs> the Raiders. Uh, all right, silver and black, black and silver. Yeah, those pants are fucking disgusting. <laughs> the helmets are okay. Notre Dame's uniforms are ten times better than the Raiders. Um, the if, current Jets are better than the Raiders. If I if, that's if, saying, oh, if, if I had a top five, one is the Yankees, two is Notre Dame, and then I don't give a fuck. You can put whatever you want there. That's one, two. One, two, Yankees, Notre Dame. Um, then if I was going to do three with the NFL. Oh. Maybe the, uh, the Chargers, the baby blues are always Yeah, the, the, the powder blues are always good. The powder blues, but I don't think they're, they're, they were one of the best. I mean, Duke. Duke's jerseys have always been... Dude, uh, uh, all right, number three would be the 80s Denver Broncos. Yeah, yeah. The orange jersey with the white, with the, like, Royal of the Sky blue helmet with the D. Oh, my God. I'm still mad Denver changed that uniform. That uniform was awesome. Uh, number four. Going in basketball, the 90s Chicago Bulls. They're iconic. Yeah, the Bulls made... The Bulls yeah. fucking made... Uh, what was it? It was like... They, 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 were, they were like maybe 15th. The white, the red, and the first time they did the third color, which was not, not the pinstripe, but the black. The black road. Oh my God, those were awesome. Yeah, those were nice. College basketball, I'd go with North Carolina. I, I could see North Carolina. I could make a point for Syracuse when um, Carmelo Anthony won the NCAA title. Yeah, the Cuse. I mean, the standard flat color has always been a nice look for a sports. Like... It's out there. I lo I always like the look of uh, the Seahawks. Oh, which one? The current one or no? The no, re no, no. The, redux, the, the first Redux. The first Redux. The one with Sean Alexander was there. Yeah. And yeah, I, I dig that. And the, the 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 white Patriots, like the white and bl the white with the blue lettering, I always liked too. I like. I like, uh, what is it? I really liked the Seahawks, uh, home gear. Not the, not the neon green. No, the, the blue and, the blue, green, and, the blue, green, and white. Yeah, the blue, green. I like that a lot. I love, I think, I think it's one of the reasons why, really, besides living here now and all that for so long and finally just getting, you know, finally just tur turning finally. It it does it does help sort of when you can buy a shirt when you can buy a jersey on NFL Shop Com and go dude I'm gonna wear the shit out of that and and that's like the Eagles home green Kelly green or midnight green whichever because the Eagles helmets make it work yeah or my favorite. The third color jerseys, the black with the green, the black jersey with the white letters and the green pants. Yeah. Oh, and they have the coolest road jerseys. Oh, and John they have the coolest looking road jerseys, the white with the green and the black, and then especially when they had the green pants with it. Oh, love yeah. that. So, John, Sorry. just so you know, 
I, the Mets did make the list for the did first. They really? The first one was like eighty. Was like the night was ninety five, and it was the nineteen seventies jerseys. Okay. And I'm like, oh, okay, so they're really stretching about what they're looking for. Because it was... Um, they didn't put the black jerseys in the way. That, uh, I like the Piazzas. Yeah, the, the black I ones were nice. the Piazzas, because I remember Piazza always wearing the black jersey. But, yeah. I'm sorry, so, I always called them the Piazzas. Oh, so, <laughs> yeah, we'll try Christian in a little bit. But I know, Chris, speaking of uniforms... We didn't talk about it last week. You want to talk? You wanted to talk about the Rams, dude. The Rams. All right, that that chrome blue helmet. Oh my god, that's that looks good. Yeah, it really does. It it's it's slick. It it, it the fact that the Rams like. Oh, their secondary logo looks like shit. I go, you know what? If as long as they're wearing those fucking helmets, I don't give a fuck what the other logo looks like. Oh yeah, because it's it's slick. It's that chrome is very. It's gonna look very nice when it starts getting scuffed up. That because oh, yeah. it's gonna show battle damage and it's gonna look fucking awesome. Oh, definitely. That's going to look... I mean, like I said before, I would love to see the Eagles with, like, a chrome. With, like, the green chrome. With the wings like that. Oh, my God. It'd be awesome. Yeah, Eagles... I mean, if you gave me a jet one of the 90s, like the old jet helmets, looking like that, with just the just the jet across the side, it would. I, I would like that. Dude, the new jet helmets I like. Well, the new jet helmets look They're a lot better like... than the white ones. Um, that th- th- I remember the white ones they tried to recreate the success they had in the sixties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the white the with white. the green with the fucking patch on it. Yeah, and it, and it, and it worked up until Sanchez butt fumbled, and then that magic was gone. The magic of the butt fumble. <laughs> Which there's rumors that Senior butt fumble. Okay, so you want to hear something scary? Go for it. The Jets don't have a backup quarterback. They've oh, called. Boy, they've they've call- they've picked <laughs> they've picked up the phone. Allegedly, yeah, okay. Senior butt fumble may be back. Oh Lord. Oh. Bo- well, the thing is, they're gonna. Well, the thing is, you're gonna play because you know Sam Donald's gonna get the Rona. <laughs> well, dude, let's let's not joke about that because it's we have good. We we finally got some good fucking news. Let's not jinx it. We got some well, good fucking news finally. All right, all right, what you said though, what you said before when you're like, do you think they're sort of pushing? A little bit um, and now, seeing how places like, oh yeah, you can do this, you can do that, especially oh, yeah, when now, involved. Now they're pushing. Now, now, now I'm like, bitch, you're all in. <laughs> yeah, I think they might. No, I think they might be pushing a little too much. And I, 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 I like, I hope it works. But I had just had this feeling it's gonna bite them in the ass. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. And what? this is the problem. You know how everyone's saying there's going to be a second wave and stuff like that? And we're going to try not to talk about this that much because we don't want to talk about Corona. We don't know yeah. what's going to happen for the sole fact that they are right now going off of uh, the flu, like how the flu would act. So we don't know what yeah. we're go- We don't know what is going to happen. But... Right now, the good news is, and it's about college football. I don't know what the fuck is going on with college football or basketball, but they just said it was starting at the end of the fucking month, or beginning of next month, voluntary workouts are okay, so they're opening up the gyms for football and basketball. For volun- yeah. For voluntary. voluntary. 
If they want to do it, yeah, but... they can. Which is a start. It's not them opening up the schools, but it's a step in the right direction. Let's see if it keeps well, I... going and doesn't fall back. Yeah, here, here here's the big butt. <laughs> big butt. There's yeah. our, here's the Rikishi. Thing is, as much as schools are going to need that money more than anything, the I, problem is, though, they're going to do the college football season, if they are going to do it, with no fans. At a, sub, at a huge, substantial loss. What did I say about the loophole? It's looking more and more <laughs> fucking real! Which is scary. No, no, no. The loop, the, the loop. No, not, no. I'm saying a huge, substantial loss is if they try to do the college football season, just the football yeah. season. Yeah. Um, you could say goodbye to about ninety percent of college, the other college sports, for maybe a year or two. Uh well, it's already happened in the because Mac. they won't have the money to fund them. And as much as, like, I love college football, to be like, oh, yeah, well, we have college football, but that means all of a sudden there's no women's college basketball, there's no gymnastics, uh, no nothing. No. Cause... That, that could be, that, uh, then I wouldn't want college football to play because, that, I mean, that is a huge, distinct possibility because college football, that under a bunch of money, funds those other sports. And the reason how it does fund it is because of the the fan gate, the parking, the tailgate, the people in the suites. That's where they get their money from. Well, it's not from TV. Here's the, the thing. TV is the conference, and they divvy it up between the teams. Well, this has already taken an effect on other colleges like the MAC. Did you by any chance hear about this? What? So the MAC has now officially suspe- canceled any conference tournaments for uh, for soccer, for most of their winter sports, winter and fall sports. The, for everything except football. No, no. Um, well, yes, for football, but they've also cut, dramatically cut, their basketball tournament from 12 teams... To eight. Because they're going to contri- try to do it. Because even college basketball is going to take a huge And loss. they said this is not going to... And they said this will not happen... Like, th- they will keep this going for the next four years. And that's just the MAC. And the MAC is not really a... They're uh, Yeah, they're not a power conference, but... There are a lot of good fucking teams in the MAC. But is that fair? No. Well, that's just one. That's just one school coming out. Uh, they were the first ones to but come as out. Much so, as, so as much as you want, as much as I love a college football season, I don't uh, want to uh, see it well, that's happen why, at the expense of women's sports. I agree with that. Because no, that's no, no. just I wrong. fully, I fully agree with that. Because. To a point where it's like, do you really want to see something come back if it's going to benefit, if it's not going to benefit everyone? And the answer is no. And where do you think the schools are going to get the money to do all that? That's the issue. The issue is like, if it, if they're going to, you know, be all come hell or high water with the money, because we got to get that little 10% split of the conference TV money that we get, which is Barely nothing. Oh, um, Chris. What? Um, uh, you might. Ha- I'm gonna set you up for the biggest rant of your life. Uh oh. Oh great. Because it has to deal with a, a a team that we have respect for now, but we hate at the same time. I'm gonna go get a drink. I'll let him go. With oh no! Drink. You're gonna have to hear this first, though, John, because the Ohio State University. Okay. Is of I? Of course, Ohio State would say fuck women's sports. No, 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 no. It's kind of worse. What now? Ohio State, and this is the headline: 
Ohio State eyes football games with 20,000 to 50,000 fans. And proceed. Wait, what? Ohio State. Ohio State. And, oh, so Ohio State is going to have their fans in the stands regardless. Right? 20,000 to 50,000 fans. Oh, God. I'm going to let him go. I'm, I'm just going to go right. grab a drink from the fridge. All right. Well, I'll Ohio right State. Ohio State is a red state. So, of course, the idiotic Republican conservative would say that shit. And I don't even. And the thing is, I thought a conservative was about, like, preserving the way of life, <laughs> which means they care about life. Apparently not. They, they, they care about money, and that's it. See, and that see, is, fuck. I, yeah, listen. If this was all done and you were going to have, if you were going to have, even if you were going to have a social distance, I, I don't even agree with this. They're like, oh, well, we could fit 100,000 fans in the stadium, but yet you're going to say, okay, so. Yeah, How much I, did I miss? Re really? So Ohio State says that, oh, we're going to put fans in the stands regardless. Fuck you. I hope you do get an outbreak of Corona. I hope Ryan Day does die now. I'm sorry. Uh, For Ohio State to even think this shit is fucking ludicrous. By the and way. This is why. This is why we need that clown out of Washington. By the way, uh, let's oh again, let's God. stop with that. Let's stop with that. But no, because then Harbaugh came out after he heard this. He goes, um, no, I want fans in the stands more than anybody, but I'll play with no fans in the stands just so we can play football. <laughs> and, and, at the, like, the when Harbaugh, when Harbaugh I, I, right. is the reason, is the fucking word of reason, that says something. <laughs> I love college football. So do I. I love, like, I love, love, love college football. But, if, if the NCAA first was saying no fans, no football, fine. I have no problem with that. I get that completely, one hundred percent. Oh yeah, I'm fine for gonna, them. Because you're I'm, not going to fine do... for them suspending the season. I get that. But as soon as they or go, at least... oh well, we can play empty stadium, but at a huge substantial loss, which means we're going to have to cut women's gymnastics, women's basketball. No. Blah 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 blah. But make sure we have our football and our college basketball. Well, no, you're not that. Here's because how thing. would you feel? How would you feel if you're on an athletic scholarship, a female on an athletic scholarship, and all of a sudden your your college goes, "Oh, but we have college football." But sorry, we have to cut your program. Uh, here's the. How would you feel? Oh no, you feel like shit. Here's the thing, though, because. Of the of what they're in, like the divisions they're in, like the Big Ten and shit, like that, the MAC and stuff like that. You're never gonna see a program get completely cut for the sole fact that the NCAA can step in and help with with those smaller programs. Now, now, Dude, wait, the wait. NCAA is washing their hands of this. They said if you want to play, it's on you. Well, wait, wait. Let, let me let me just get this point out because they they can do that and they can step in for these smaller ones because of the NCAA tournaments. You're not going to see a team bail out because uh, they're not going to cut a program because it can't get funded. Because let's face it, that's a bunch of bullshit. Everyone's saying, "Oh, well, these college football college football is the reason certain things get funded." I go, "That's not fucking true." College football is a good cut of it, but it's not the full funding of said programs. All right, the funding of said program actually is from the gate and the money and the concessions and yeah. stuff like that that do pay a lot for these programs. And without that, a bunch of college ADs and a bunch of college presidents said, if we play, we may have to suspend other sports for like two to four years. And no, I'm uh, just like, if I am, a, if I'm a person who came on an athletic scholarship, like a track scholarship, 
or or say like you know women's basketball, a women's soccer scholarship, or whatever like that, or field hockey scholarship, you know, or something like that. And I, I came to this school, and all of a sudden they're like, "Yeah, we're not having that anymore for like the foreseeable future." I'd be fucking pissed. Well, you know what? You know what? I'd be like, have- "Oh, so but you can have your college football, then you're gonna lure it over, but you're gonna cut everything else." And that's where it falls really into like Title IX and shit like that. But of course, the reason why I brought up the idiot in the White House is because now he's executive ordering things where they can undo regulations, which means eventually he's going to say, oh, well, well, I want college football, so let's undo Title IX. Well, listen, listen, listen. Those type and you of- know it's not beyond him to do that. Oh, no, that's... See... Because of the person, you're. I'm not gonna say anything ill will about somebody, but yeah, you're you're right about that. Oh, I'll say ill will about him. It's his fault that we're even in this fucking mess. Uh, no, 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 no. You can't go. Ah, uh, no, no. It is. It is because he said, "Oh, we're fine, folks. We're but it's fine, also, folks. But also fine, at the folks. same time, it's you we're can't, fine, folks. We're gonna be completely perfect. All of a sudden, he called the national emergency. You can't put." You can't put Stop stupid. Lying. You can't put idiotic people doing idiotic things on one person. If because you know it, it, as much as he well, says, you can if it's an idiotic person. I'm saying if you put it on like Joe Schmo for going out with no fucking mask and standing three but feet next to somebody, king of jackass. What? But he's king of the jackasses. But that doesn't he's mean shit. He's the guy that he's goes, not the like, one. He's not he's the, the one. Guy tell- goes, follow the CDC regulations, and then he says, "Liberate, open. We don't need masks. Fuck him." But then again, you have places like Oklahoma saying, "Oh yeah, we can't have a mask on because uh, we're afraid to get robbed." That's the biggest fucking bunch of horse shit. They're, they make up like five thousand excuses why they can't wear a mask, and yet they all are horse shit. I don't want to wear a mask because it hurts to breathe. Oh, fuck you. We all have to deal with it. Shut the fuck up. Cover your fucking face. Stop bitching out like a fucking baby. Um, Mr. Doomsday Prepper saying, oh, I could I could beat all you libtards. Well, well, you hold on. You can't even get a fucking haircut without... You can't even go a fucking month without bitching. I need a haircut. No, so fuck no, you. Well, that's, that's Detroit in a nutshell. <sighs> Everywhere, it, it, Jesus it's, Christ! It's and fucking and fucking young Karen going. Massages are essential. Buy a fucking back massager and shut the fuck up. <laughs> Buy a vibrator. Wait, Jesus what? Right, Karen. And I hate using that Karen because I know a girl named Karen, and she hates when people keep saying Karen. But I'm sorry, that's fucking female Karen right there, <laughs> and she can get fucked. Sorry, I'm in a bad fucking mood tonight. Oh, dude, the minute I saw that, and I'm just like, wait, they're going to try to do fucking... They're going to try to do in sports Ohio? in Ohio? I'm like, oh, fan. no. I, I have to report this, but Chris is going to have a fucking field day. <laughs> and Ohio State, and Ohio State basically saying, oh, yeah, fuck, fa- you know, yeah, fuck our people, whatever. You know, but hey, come to the football game and support, but you'll die. Fuck that. Now, now, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say something. I'm gonna say no. Wait, I'm gonna say one thing about this, and this is where I I agree with you, but at the same time I have to say this. What if they start out just in general? If for some chance they start the season, let's just hypothetically let's say they start the season on time, Labor. Uh, Labor Day weekend, let's just say they start it. No fans. Then what, college football. College football. But then by October or by like late October, by like Halloween, things start getting back to like they find a vaccine and then they start putting fans in the stands. If fans even go I wonder Our if they're again? so. Say if they start the season Labor Day weekend, like they normally do. Obviously, the Irish can't fly to fucking okay. Ireland. Say so with no fans in the stands. Yeah, no fans in the stands. Yeah. They start that way. 
But then October, November, you know, when they get they get a vaccine. Or they if there's find, a vaccine and everything's find, open or and, they find and, something, and, it's, and they yeah. can have fans in the stands safely. But that's, what, that's what I'm getting at. But that's what I'm getting at. What if the end game, if they're thinking the end game is they can at least get half capacity with something that's safe, but not not at the opening of the season. But fifty thousand is ridiculous. Oh, that's but that's that's, that's, that's not half even their stadium during the social distancing no, guidelines. No, what I'm saying is, I wonder if they're thinking they can get fifty thousand in towards the end of the year, end of the football year, where things are things. If things start getting better and better and better, the end game is they can get half the stadium full. Well, the first problem they should have set first problem. They didn't say we can get fans in and we're eyeing fans right away. Do not say that right now because you look like a fucking idiot. Yeah, like and even even like guys like everybody spoke to a lie. Even like guys like Michael K are saying, no, you open up baseball with no fans. Your end goal is get fans in the stands by playoffs. All right. One guy said this on a sports call in show. And right now, I sort of echo it. I know that we're looking for hope and sports. And, and getting sports back can provide some of that hope. Well, but, at what point, but at what point does it stop being about hope and it's really all about the money? And where people are re- willing to really have these athletes risk their ass to do that. And my and my my concern about the fallback of this with the blowback of this is not the athletes. It's something else with it. Because people being in idiotic map mentality they are a certain sect of people, I'm not gonna go political they will see that athletes are coming back and team sports are coming back, right? Even though they're being all tested. I, I know where you're going with this. And they're playing. And they're going to go, well, they're playing, so why can't you open up everything? And we have it. Do, we have it like the way it was. Well, no. And you yeah, know exactly. it'll happen. Oh, no. And you know, and you know what, though? Happen. You're and absolutely right. You know Fox right. News would be championing that completely. You know what, though? You're absolutely. Here's the thing. You're absolutely right. And that's just not, and that's not one side. That's that could be anybody. There's because people are going to be so stressed out. They might just say, "Oh, we're seeing this open. Well, why can't you do this?" No, because they have a plan put together to keep them all safe. That's why everything can't be open at once. Right. I mean, it's bad enough. I I, I see on Facebook that there's this clown in Atlantic City, New Jersey, who decided to open up his gym twice. Twice. Oh, God, him. Twice. He got c- cited twice already for it. Yeah, and, like, people are like, oh, you killed a kid. I'm like, oh, great. And then there are the idiotic people that are like, I don't care about that. He made a mistake. He deserves a second chance. I'm like, yeah, but when you show no remorse over the kid dying, um, you no, know, you're a piece of shit. I don't know the full story. I just know what I read. No, I don't buy the whole he killed the kid. I don't buy that. I do know for Even the... Even if it's involuntary manslaughter? I, again, I don't know the story about that. All I do know is that he opened up his gym and he got fined twice for it. Yeah, Fox News is championing him as a hero of the public. Well, Fox News is a fucking dumb piece of shit, just like CNN and MSNBC. They're all fucking stupid. And you know, as soon as the NFL and NBA start coming back, you'll be like, well, why can't they open up everything else? Look what it's doing with the NFL. Like, they point to Georgia's great numbers, and then Georgia lets, lets slip that, like, oh yeah, by the way, uh, we didn't test anybody, that's why we had the great numbers. We're starting to test people, and our numbers are really bad now. There's there's a lot of shit that I'm not getting into because there's stuff that could be talked about that it's kind of just no. 
that, that's that's my biggest concern with team sports coming back. No, and it's that's, like that's fair. Idiots saying that. It's completely fair. And you know how I feel about college sports coming back. I mean, the kids are the number one priority. It shouldn't be about money. It shouldn't be about anything else. If the kids want to come back and play, then okay, fine. But don't be like, oh, yeah, well, we'll come back and play college football, but it'll be at the expense of, like, women's basketball, women's gymnastics. It's like all of a sudden, oh, yeah, we're going to have our big cash cow that we can jerk off to over the fall, but then we're going to cut everything else. And that is not cool. No, that's a little, that's a little much. Mm-hmm. Uh, John, what are you... I turned on the ESPN radio and they said that right away, I was like, uh, shut it down. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say shut it down. Again, if you can come back with nobody in stands and keep everything open, but then your end goal is to have people in the stands by, say, a late, by Halloween then go for it. If you can do it safe with no... Uh, stop. That's the thing I gotta stress out, though. It's... No... The schools have to be open first off. Let's face it. The schools have to be somewhat open and running. Yeah. And like I said, even if you opened up the school at the beginning for... Like I said, the, the quote-unquote loophole where you're having the labs open up for the people that have to be on campus and you start football. But your end goal is knowing that you're going to be able to open the school to everyone by Halloween. Go for it. As long as it's safe. Yeah, but if you're but if all of a sudden you start the season and it doesn't happen, then all of a sudden you're then all of a sudden schools are going to start pulling other sports, then, and that is not cool. No, that then is that's not good. But that's the thing. You have to almost have yourself in like a surefire way that you're not go- that you're <laughs> you know you're not going to fuck with this if you're going to do it. If not, don't do it. Then yeah, college football does not really help push college football back. Then if you really want to have fans in the fucking stands. Get rid of the non-conference games and just do conferences and start it in October. Yeah, no. I mean... I, it's it's going to be... I mean, yeah, like I said, schools have to be open. Like That's the big thing. Let's get that... Open. They have to be open. To work. Yeah. I for mean... This to work or, or their boosters are going to have to chip in a ton of money or whatever because... If college football goes on, well, all the other sports go away for years. There's gonna be there's up. gonna be riot. There's gonna be a lot of bullshit that happens with that. There's gonna be people that boycott. There won't be riots. Well, there's, there's gonna be, be people that boycott. There's bullshit. gonna be people that boycott. John, you've been quiet through oh, all this. It'll be boycotting. It'll be very. It'll be very very white hot. It'll yeah. be because all of a sudden. The quality just goes right out the window again. Yeah, like this is a little different than pros. John, what is your opinion on this? <clears throat> Bottom line, I'm just gonna just cut straight to the straight to the to the meat of this thing. If if people are not if they can't guarantee people safety, then they shouldn't do it. Yeah, they can't well, guarantee they can't if they can, if they can guarantee everybody's gonna be safe. And things are going to be okay, then fine. But if you can't guarantee it, that's what I've been saying about baseball. If you can't guarantee it, don't fucking do it. Well, base- you're just going to be putting you're just going to be putting people's lives in danger. You're going to be putting people's families in danger, all just just to bring a sport back. That you know, sure, it's going to suck if it weren't happening. But guess what? There's always next year. Well, that's here, and that's and that's the other thing, though, too. For what's different between this and baseball and baseball, basketball, football, shit like that, is that pro athletes have a union. The union speaks on the whole on the athletes. If they don't want to play, they don't have to play. Like Snell, if Snell or Harper don't want to play, they don't have to play. They just don't get paid. 
college. You know what? You know what I'll say. You know what I'll say about Harper. Harper didn't say he didn't want to get paid. He's actually trying to make every. He's trying to look out for everything. No, 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 no. But I'm saying is if it's if he Snow doesn't want to. Says, no, I don't want to. I I signed for this much money. I should be paid this much. Right, money. but if you don't want to. But I, no, 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 no. But Harper is saying like he doesn't feel um, like you just said. If you can't guarantee my safety, I'm not going to play this year. And he understands that. He knows what he's risking if he doesn't play this year. Snell yeah. wants to get paid, but he doesn't want to take the risk. I'm sorry, it don't work that way. It's either you want to play and get paid, fine. If you don't want to play, that's fine too. If you don't feel safe to play, you no one's putting a gun to your head and play. You just don't expect to not get paid. The biggest problem, again, is that the owners went back and tried to restructure the deal they had in March for this off. That the players agreed to. Well, here, hold on. The, other the thing, owners are like, oh, yeah, well, we got, well, so why don't you take your cut on top of the cut you're already taking? Well, apparently they've worked something else out that it would be now they've gone back to almost a prorated salary. But now the players apparently want all of it. You know why That's the players why want it like that? Because the owners tried to get screwy and do it another way and then basically put it out there among the public. Well, that's the problem. The players got it to make No, because that's what the owners do. And then they make the players look like greedy assholes when it's the players who are risking their damn asses on it while the owners sit back in wherever they're from, probably in wherever they're at, and don't have to worry about it. Well, See, this is why I've been... This is why... I've been saying that this whole season is going to be nothing but controversy, and it's just it's just going to be bad. This is what I'm saying. It should just not happen. You're never going to you know? do that because the, the here's the thing. And I understand what you're saying, John, and I really do. But as a business, it's never going to happen because the owners want to make money. If the players don't want to play, then it's got to be on the players to just be like, we sit out, we strike. They pretty much have to strike. Then, then, we, then, then there it is. There it is right there. That the owners do not care about human life. They care about the bottom line. Oh, I'm not saying they don't. But at the same time, if, it's, if, if, if the players don't want to play, because I already know there's maybe... It, it's already been reported that may, I want to say maybe 5% of them really don't want to play. That's fine. But then you have to get... the. But if the... The Players Association says we're in, and if you have your agents, these agents like Scott Boris, fucking idiot, saying, "Oh yeah, yeah. they're f- Scott they're fuck they're healthy. If they get it, they'll be fine." He literally has come out and said that, "Oh yeah, they get the coronavirus. They're, they're healthy. They'll they're fine." I'm like, dude, that's cold. That's fucking cold. Wait, what did he say? He goes, oh yeah, you know, a person that's like an MLB player or a professional athlete gets the coronavirus, they'll be fine. I'm like, saying, oh, if they get it, they'll be completely fine. So yeah. They don't have to worry about it. Right. Because he's trying to make his money. By the way, um, yeah, uh, Vernon Davis is a professional football player who got it, and he's fine. He is fine now, but he... Pretty much almost died. Because guess yeah, what? He has nothing. asthma. Because guess what? He has this fucking nothing, asthma. Yeah, right. This is nothing to take softly. No, but... Let me put a, you know what? Just, uh, let, me, let me say something. Since you brought it up about the whole people dying and stuff. Let me put it to you this way. This past week, I lost somebody else very dear and close to my family over this. He just went into, he went into the hospital... For a simple surgery, they put him in a nursing home. He's seventy. He was seventy-seven years old. Oh, sure, granted, yeah. he was he was up in the day. He was seventy-seven. He had never had he never had any major health until he had this surgery. They put him in a nursing home. Within two days of being in that fucking nursing home, he was fucking got the coronavirus. And three days later, he was fucking dead. So I don't oh. want to hear about all these fucking owners coming out and saying, "Oh, if a player gets it, he'll be fine." Fuck them. Well, that's not the owner. That's let that... me put it. No, 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 no. Well, not, now it's my turn. This is the second person I knew in my life that's been affected 
and that has died from this shit. Well, I'm sick and tired of these people saying, if it's not safe, don't fucking do it. I'm sick and tired of it. Well, that, that's it. If it's not safe, don't do it. But there, there's been a 68-page, I guess you, I guess it's a referendum, I guess you would call it, to keep these players safe. The, associ- the Players Association and the players have already agreed upon it, and they think it's safe. It's now a money issue, which apparently they've gotten... To, in, they've Some of them have agreed to what the money idea is, but then there's these other ones, like the Snell, and that want all of it. So now you're at an impasse with that. You're literally 99% there, but then you have these idiots like Scott Boris saying at the beginning, oh yeah, someone that's healthy will just be fine. It's like, dude, shut the fuck up. Because you want your money, shut the fuck up. Let me put it to you this way. This is what's going to happen. And Chris will probably back me up on this, or he may not. You know what's going ha- you know to end up happening? One of these players or somebody involved with one of these teams, God forbid, and I hope this never happens, somebody big time is going to end up getting this disease, and it's going to end up fucking dying, and then the players' union and agents and families are going to start suing this person, that person, and the next person. Here, here's the, the next 20 years mm. over this because of the simple fact that, well, you told us it was safe. We believed you. Well, you shouldn't have because guess what? This disease, unfortunately, is so unpredictable, we don't know what the fuck it's going to do Two, a month mm. from now. It could be totally wiped out in a month or it could be ten times stronger in the next month. Nobody fucking knows. This is what I'm trying to get a point across. But they're 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 trying to say, oh, it's safe. Oh, we believe it's this. We believe it's that. Unless you've got concrete fucking evidence to prove that it's going to be safe, don't fucking tell me it's safe. I I completely agree. That's why I'm. That's why when they're talking about basketball coming back, I'm like, that's a sport where that's that's rough. Face to face on somebody, no. Hockey, you can cover somebody's face and you can have that. Football, they're looking at N95 uh, things for face masks to try to help, which I'm okay with yeah. if they can do that. Baseball, you can. Baseball, if like you go they, by the guidelines, if you go by the, how, and yes, it's not concrete, but if you go by what, the, I mean, as a blueprint of what the KBO is doing, meaning. Having masks, having minimum people in the uh, in the dugout. Actually, the MLB would have, unless you're not unless you're playing, no one's in the fucking dugout. You're in the fucking stands. That's how they're doing social distancing. If you're in the, you're not in the dugout. You're in the fucking stands. Like that's that's the one problem, of the problem. Uh, right, th- here's the reason why the KBO can do it and we can. Well, I'm, I'm saying, but here's Look the thing. Look at the KBO's numbers of infection. No, 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 no. But no. that's not what I'm trying to get at, dude. I'm saying you take the blueprint of what they're doing. And obviously, I'm not saying because of the infections. I'm saying you're, they're trying to take what they're doing and, perf- and make it better. That's what it is. Because they're not, trust me, Korea is completely different than us. I mean, shit, Korea is like, is like. Trying to make better what yeah. like how we took how we didn't want world the tests that the rest of the world took. Don't, we tried to make ours yeah, well that's just that's just that's just yeah. him being an idiot an idiot just let's not go there um but no that's not what i was getting at and i guess christian's not joining us because it's 9 30 so oh uh, he's about to text me so oh if he if he jumps on then great uh but no i wanted to talk about yeah the last thing I wanted to talk about real quick, and we're not going to talk about it that much, but it's stupid. Uh, fucking Disney World is going to be opening is going to be opening up and holding the rest of the NBA playoffs as of right now. That's stupid. Mm, fuck it. Just cancel no, the fuck. No. Just cancel the fucking that, season. Just... just cancel the fucking rest of the season. That's all I gotta say. That, that's all we have to say. Just come back in fucking Christmas. Don't. It's pointless here yeah the biggest issue is we go, we go oh like a lot of countries are, a lot of other countries are doing this that the thing is a lot of the other countries don't 
have the numbers we have. And that's the issue. South Korea, where the KBO is, they hunkered down right away, had people keep away, and their population is a lot smaller than ours, and their infection rate is a lot smaller than ours, and they actually did shit right. We did shit ass backwards. Where South Korea social distanced and did all the lockdown for what, like three to four months? Yeah. We, we after one month, are like, oh my God, we got to get this. We got to do this. We got to do that. And we're going to have a disaster. Well, I don't want to, to have be a disaster. negative. I don't want to be negative. But when morons go, we look at the money, the money, the money, the money, the money. And all of a sudden, some, something happens badly because nobody's taking it seriously. Then it's going to be a problem. I've already, I've already joked at work. I'm like, well, well, good old holiday furlough coming up. Like I was like, I'm gonna spend my, Christ- you know, I'm gonna spend my Christmas getting that six hundred dollar payment again because they're gonna put it back in practice because it's go because we are trying to jumpstart and kickstart things quick because the people that thought that oh yeah we're fine for this. We never, they never were. And now they're bitching and pissing and moaning. And as much as I love sports, if you can't do it safe with the numbers, all right, UFC wrestling, they can do that because, again, it's a small number of people. Hey, what's up, Christian? Team sports is different. It's not, uh, it's different. No, it's a small number of people. What's up, Christian? What's happening? What's going right. on? So, uh, uh, we're trying not to do some Corona talk, but we did Corona talk, so yeah. Yeah, God, I can't even remember the last time I was on. College football. Guys? College football. <laughs> was it? Uh, no, the last time you were on, we actually had full fans in the stands. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's been a crazy I think it's kind of been a little bit of a crazy Roller coaster for me after football season. Um, I think Chris knows. I don't know if you saw it, Ronnie, but in February I tragically lost my grandfather. So Oof, um, sorry to hear that. Thank you, thank you. You know, uh, eighty four. Eighty four is a great life. Um, the only thing I'm kind of, I'm happy about is he went before all uh, this Corona stuff broke out. Um, so it's no more pain. It's no more suffering. Um. Yeah, and I mean, you know, we went to New Orleans to bury him, and New Orleans was packed at that time. Ever since then, I think they've been shut down, and you know, New Orleans is a party city. I call it oh, yeah. the South Vegas. So, so I walked on. It's the East Coast of Vegas. So, yeah. so what is so what is your view on this? Because, like, I'm saying, like, you know, I'd love to have sports back, but I think I, if we go over oh, what the other countries did where their numbers and they did everything right. That's why they can, where we fucked things up from the jump. Yeah. I kind of get what you mean when you talk about fucking everything from the jump, because, but, but I, but here's um, the thing, Christian, let me, let me just go off of my opinion. Cause he is right. That's what we were saying. What I brought up was cause he's trying to say what I said, but not quite. I think uh, from what I'm looking at other countries doing like the KBO and stuff like that, we're trying to take what they're doing and make it work for us in a different way. I mean, we're the way I look blueprint. at it, that's how I look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, I watch the mayor every day, um, speak out here just to see what, what he says. And like, honestly, the, the, the curve hasn't flattened. I think now in the state of Illinois, there are over a hundred thousand confirmed cases. Like, it just seems like the number gradually has gone up each and every day. And I don't know if you guys saw this on the news. Um, there was a guy on, I believe, the south side of Chicago. His mother was a first responder. Guy is 26 years old. He wanted to have a little get-together with about 15 to 20 people. You know, word travels and, and, and shit like that. And he 
ended it ended up being a party of like over 150 people. And was this guy's he name? Dak it, he doesn't live. With us. Huh? Was this guy's name Dak Prescott? No. Shut up. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right. So, so 150 people up, and he ended up he ended up throwing a party at his mother's house and. He didn't live with his mom, and when his mom found out, one, she, of course, she was livid. Two, she's a first responder. And yeah. three, she um, had her identity hidden, so no one knew who she was, which I don't blame her no. for because she could have lost her job. And her son idiotically gets on TV and says, you know, I didn't realize it was that severe. I'm like, what you mean? You didn't know. How it, it was that severe? Really? Like, come on, man! Oh, it, it, it's ridiculous. Like, it, it's funny how Columbus a bar opens up. Oh. It's packed to the gills. Nobody with a mask, and all of a sudden now they're having an infection rate. Oh, you wonder? Right. I mean, like, I, I I'm I go to work in a warehouse, right? I I, I went back to work this week, and. The funny thing is we're wearing masks all over the place. I'm still afraid I might get it. Yeah, I mean, you know, the way I look at it, um, the other day I actually went to Chicago and I saw, like, this may have been the most crowded. I've been to Chicago a few times since everything shut down. And um, it, it was... Pro- this was probably the one time where I saw the most people out there. Like you saw people Dude, this running, week- this weekend taking walks, and I even saw people the in the parks having picnics. Right, and I mean, at, some people aren't taking it seriously. And the thing is, when you don't take it seriously, that's when you get bit in the ass. Well, here's well, the let thing. me right. put it. Oh, go ahead, John, let, me, let me let me put it to this way: Christian, Christian, I hasn't been on in a while, so he doesn't know. I don't know if he's had anybody directly affected by this, but like I said, I, Ronnie knows and Chris knows. In the last two months, I've lost two people very close to me due to this thing. And I've known, I've had a couple other friends get bitten by it, unfortunately. So my opinion is that this, I take this shit very seriously. I don't leave my house unless I absolutely positively have to, unless I need to go food shopping or take my mother to the doctor or the pharmacy to get her medication. That's about as far as it goes for me. I well, my ass doesn't leave the house. Um, and, it's, and it's not like here. I'm afraid it's not like I'm afraid to, but it's just that I've seen firsthand what this do- has done to people, especially people in my own life. I, I um I've gone out for walks, like you know, I have a dog so instead of him pissing all over my floor, in, in my house, you know. You sort of got to take the dog for a walk. Yeah, I got to take him thing. out. See, here's the thing. I personally think there's a happy median. I think there's a hap- there's there's staying home, but then there's also not If you're going to go out to not be stupid. But the thing, yeah. But 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 that's the yeah, problem. There are people There are people that are stupid. Stupid. Are stupid. Exactly. Like I work I work, I, I work for a uh, lawn care service, so I'm technically an essential worker. I work around people... Ha- hey, hey, if you have that letter, you're an essential worker. Right. I have that letter, so I'm an essential worker. Well, if you... I mean... But, but the other thing is, though, is I work around people. I talk to people. I, I, I don't wear a mask when I'm outside unless I have something wrapped around my neck, unless I see somebody barge up to me. That's when I'll throw it on. But at the same time, too, I don't go out. I go to work and I come home. But I also don't, like, I guess also because I'm working, it just, maybe I'm not staying at home all day. Um, To answer John's question, though, uh, two of my friends have, have actually caught it. Uh, my one friend was talking about it, and when he called me a few weeks ago, he told me he had it, 
and I said, what was your, what were your first initial symptoms? And he was like, um, I couldn't breathe. But he said, that's probably the top one. It was difficult to breathe. And when he did, it hurt until um, he lost his sense of taste. Um, yep. You know, and then I had another friend. And I'll actually even read you what he said. Because he he kind of has a no a whole um, a whole not like a whole different view and a whole perspective on on life and he was just like man I've been so out of it with this damn coronavirus and he said he spent a week in the hospital fighting that shit and he just said you know don't catch it um, you know do practice everything social distancing wash your hands and one thing I've done when I've gone out. I have, um, when I've gone on out, like, the clothes I wear out, I put them in my hand, but obviously, like, I wash them right away. It's like, you just, you just don't know. But uh, to be real with you, I have never, um, I've never seen anything like this. It's, well, no, no one has. Some people, some no people are comparing, some people are calling this a modern day Great Depression. Oh, I've, I've said that. I've said that on many occasions. And you know what it is? It's like you said you had two friends that did that. Well, one of the one of them was a guy I graduated high school with, just turned forty nine years old. You know, he was uh he was out working. I, I he used to he did he did kind of what Ronnie did. He did lawn work and he also did other stuff on the side. One day he started feeling a little under the weather. Went to the doctor. He had it. Was in the hospital for it. Got released from the hospital because they said he was doing better. But the two days of being home, he was gone. Yeah, and then I he even had another friend. I mean, wow. just, it, just out of the blue. I mean, I had just, I hadn't spoken to him in years. We were close, we were super duper close in high school. But as it always happens when you leave high school, you drift apart. But we had spoken in time since we graduated high school, which all of 30 years ago. Yeah, I'm old as fuck, I know. But, uh. But the fact is, it just, it shouldn't have, ha this shouldn't have happened. You know, this shouldn't have happened. I mean, and then my, a, a guy who was like an uncle to me in the family, he wasn't blood, mm -hmm. but I knew him my entire life. I always called him an uncle. So he let in, me, he, so. He went, in, he went in for surgery. Two days later, they put him in a nursing home. He was, he was gone within three days of being in a nursing home. So let me ask all of you this, and I don't know if you guys discussed it before I came on, but let's kind of look at it from a political standpoint. You know, okay, during situations go. like we, we try to avoid the political shit. It's oh, kind of no, hard not. No, it's kind of hard not to though. I mean, it really is. There's, there's, there's one. But, on one hand, so... it, it looks like it's a political stint. On the other hand, it's. I mean, the fact that New York is opening up to sports teams. Is terrifying. Yeah. So, about what percentage of the blame would you guys put on on the president? Because he was told about this, and it just seemed like he kind of swept shit under the rug, you know. And I really don't uh, like going. In. I got it. You, a... you want my honest to God opinion? I think it's yeah. between seventy five and eighty percent. He's to blame for this. I'd say I'm a with John. I'm I with say John. I yeah. I lean. He's over fifty. I would lean more towards like sixty, sixty-five. Because you just gotta also put more. You also gotta put blame on people for not taking it that seriously either. But I give him That's most. True. I it's give him heavy. No, 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 put no, it no. this way: this has turned middling people going. Eh, I don't know about this coming the election. This has turned people into Team Blue quick. What I'm saying is, though, I can't give him the full, like, three quarters. I will give him over 50%, though, because he is the president. It is on him. But at the same time, the people that are screaming, oh, yeah, I can do whatever I want, yada, 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 again, like Chris says, the Trumpers, will just are also to blame because they're not thinking of other people's safety. And no, they're the not. Way. They're thinking of their own selfish shit and they're pressuring people to open up quick and do this and do that because they're inconvenienced. Well, I'm sorry, Karen and Carl. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Fall in love with the fucking pair of clippers 
Learn how to cut your goddamn bush or hair or massage yourself. There's a doorknob in a door. Rub up against it like a fucking bat. Like, Jesus Christ. If you're married, have your husband do it. Oh, but he's probably too busy jerking off and drinking beer to do it. Well, let him learn how. Jesus. But you know what? You know what it is? You know what it is? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You said you asked about the thing. Let me put it to you this way. There's all the people out there that are so far up Mr. Orange Face's ha- up, up Mr. Orange Face's ass that uh, they that he could cough the national anthem and they'll think that's the new fucking song. Anything that man says, some of these people in this world, they're like, if you if you thought once in a while you'll be safe from the coronavirus, all of a sudden you'll be you see a thousand people fucking farting all over the fucking world. I'm just using Here's that. As a, look at this. That, look at this. this. He's taking. I, he says he's taking hydroxychloroquine. All of a sudden now you can't find the fucking shit. Why? Because morons are buying it up. It's just like the toilet paper. It's just like the cleaning supplies. It's just like all that other shit. He's causing, he, by him saying that, he's trying to boost up prices. On the, Sooner or later, we'll be seeing this shit up on eBay. We'll be seeing this on the black fucking market. Oh, oh will be I got the will be all over eBay. Are you kidding me? You'll be seeing that, for God's sakes, when this thing started, as a giggle, I looked on eBay as for toilet paper. Somebody was selling a raw. Now I remember this because I bookmarked it and I looked at it for a couple of days. A single roll of Scott 1,000 percent toilet tissue, just the one roll. You know, you know the individual rolls you see in the store. That goes for what about three, four dollars for a roll? This motherfucker was selling it for fifty fucking dollars, and people were bidding on it. Dude, Nintendo Switch for seven hundred fifty dollars, no game. Yeah. For what? Why? Because, well, you can use a Nintendo Switch that they have this thing called Ring Fit. Okay. So you could sort of get fit and also, you know, so people can play Mario and shit like that. And yeah, the kids but why? Play around I can and get they a... don't need a TV because the screen's right there. Yeah, but you Everybody's can just... Everybody's been buying out of Switches. The stores have been selling out of switches, but not really, because scalpers buy them. They buy them like ridiculous, like like as soon as they come on, they buy them in bulk and then they sell them for like three times what they're worth. But yet I can go on Amazon and there's a switch I found a switch for two hundred bucks. Not recently. Go on Amazon right now and put Nintendo Switch. And yeah, see the what collectible, comes up. the collectible ones are freaking ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, just go look for normal. But go on the Amazon. Point, the whole, the whole point, go on Amazon and search Nintendo Switch and watch what comes up. You will fucking shit. The whole point I think you're trying to make is just like when our person in charge, and I'll use that term loosely, says something. Like, you know, it's like, I look at it this way. I don't really don't speak politics, but I'm going to say this. It's when a news reporter a couple weeks ago asked him a question about something. And he didn't want to answer, so what did he do? I'm not going to answer press conference over. And he walked away like a toddler who wasn't allowed to play with his tablet. (laughs) For God's sake, he fucking pouted and walked away. Like, fine, you don't want to do it? I'm going to walk away and go home. Man, man. I mean, All right. I mean, great. Okay. Yeah, the light sucks. Nobody wants a light. But still, but anyway, let's get the fuck off of this. Let's... Right, where's Christian at? Because I think he hit, like... Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about lighthearted sports stuff. I well, think you put him on mute. Or he no, put he's, he on put mute. himself on mute. You can't use a light streaming. Okay, Brie. Um, can't use a light for ring fit either. No. Ring fit will laugh at you. But anyway, yes, so Christian. So we're going to, I want to, the reason we asked for you on, or you asked for you to come on, being that being that you're from Chi-Town, from Chicago. I'm from New York. Yes, I lighthearted sports talk. You're from New I'm York, from but you're living. I just live in Illinois. 
But, okay, so how long have you been living in Illinois? Okay. How long have you been living in Illinois? Too long, but I still don't claim this damn state because it's crooked and I hate it out here. Well, so is New York, but... <laughs> Yeah, that's true, but I'm always going to be right. New York at heart. Right, we'll, we'll I have the Yankee the logo tatted on me. All right, we'll get to the gist of it. I'm pretty sure you saw the last dance. I did. Okay. Uh, so, we were all... Okay, so if you go by everybody, John obviously was probably in in college when Jordan was in was playing. Towards the last dance. Uh-huh. Am I right, John? Uh-huh. Uh. 98? 98, I was, uh, I was working in 98. You're... Okay. I was a full, I was working full time. I didn't go to, I, I went to technical school, like a trade school after high school. So I really didn't go to college. So, but trade school, college, I was a full time worker. So, okay. Um, I was eight. So I barely remember it, but I remember the last dance. So this was nice to go back and rewatch, to watch all this shit. Even though, granted, it was very Jordan. It was pretty much a documentary on Jordan. But what were your guys' thoughts on it? Like, what did you guys think? I didn't watch um, it, so I don't know. I didn't watch it, so. Oh, just in general, like the Bulls, the the nineties Bulls. They were a dynasty. That's, I mean, you can all, all I can say is on my part, Jordan was a friggin' was a freak. Rodman was just a, a, a regular state of the art freak, <laughs> you know, but, but I mean, it's just like they were a dynasty back then. I mean, there was no team. I've never seen a team in sports like them. And I probably never will see a team like them in my lifetime. You know, I mean, there's a lot of teams that are good, but there's no, there's never going to be a team like that ever again. Um, I, I for one, I loved it. Um, it was the best thing, I think, to come on TV with, you know, all of us being diehard sports fans. I prefer to watch that more uh, so than, um, I do repeat games because watching a repeat game is like watching a movie you've seen a thousand times. You already know how the shit's gonna end. Um, it, it was it was very it was very entertaining. Uh, just kind of like I don't really remember Jordan. I'm only 29. I'll be 30 this year. Okay. I don't really remember Jordan. I don't really remember Jordan early on in his career. So I know more of Jordan towards the end. Towards of the his Wizards, career. the Wizards, um, the Wizards, Jordan. Well, I mean, I saw, I do remember the '95, '96 Bulls, you know, vaguely the '72 and '10, and I mean, just how they dominated everybody that year. <coughs> uh, I remember when he won the finals um, against Seattle uh, that year, and then beating Utah those two years in a row. Like I do remember. That, that game six where he uh, hit the shot over Byron Russell. So it was fun to see. Uh, I was really happy that ESPN decided to move it up because I think it was supposed to come on in right up to mid the finals. to late. <laughs> right, right. So I'm glad that they uh, they decided to give us something to look forward to because like I was intrigued by watching it each and every week. The you know, ratings. I even had my mom record it so she could check it out as well um the ratings you know just living in new york at that living living in new york at that time um it was very uh the bulls were on every week look at it like that okay like they were on each and every every week every time a prime time game included them you know you were you were locked in to watching it you know i remember the trips where jordan was out in new york to play the Knicks and kill the Knicks each and every time. You know, I think he killed every team that he played. It just kind of made me appreciate a little bit of that era of basketball a little bit more than what it is now because the NBA is soft. Thank to you. Me. You know, I I really don't think a lot of the guys in the NBA now would 
able to last in that era. Um, but the one thing I will say is this. The more I saw Jordan and the more I saw how he was at, in practice and in games and the competitor who that he was, the more I saw why we always said the late Kobe Bryant was the closest thing to him because Kobe even said on, on the special himself, I don't have my championships without learning from Michael, you know, because I know they were very close. Um, so it was it was just it was really fun. You know, Sundays, I always had something forward. So I had something to look forward to. I hadn't really been excited for anything sports wise over the weekend, probably since the football season ended. Um, yeah, I liked yeah. it. I liked it. But I will say this. Um, the Bulls front office, they've always been stupid because Jerry Reinsdorf had the chance to bring everybody uh, back. Oh, Jerry Krause. <laughs> yep, yep. Michael retired. They trade Pippen. They trade Steve Kerr, and then they decide not to bring back um, uh, uh, Phil Jackson. And, you know, ever since then, the Bulls have been damaged. Now, look, I've been in Illinois since 2000. I still won't claim this crooked-ass state. But uh, the best Bulls team that I saw was the 2010-2011 Bulls when Rose won the MVP. Mm -hmm. Um, That was probably the most buzz, according to a lot of, like, longtime Chicago sports fans that the Bulls had really given the city of Chicago at that time. But I've talked to people um, about, about the last dance, and I asked my one buddy, excluding... The 72 and 10 Bulls, who was the best team that you saw through, throughout both three pizza? And he said the 91 92 squad. And, you know, he gave a lot of credit to Horace Grant for, you know, kind of being that third piece because they had that big three Jordan, Pippen, and Horace Grant. And then Rodman came in and he was a difference maker. So it was fun. I really enjoyed it. You know, uh, I like that they kept it uncut. I like, you know, all the swear words, all the cursing. There was two versions of that. There was two versions of that. One was on ESPN, which was the mature one, and then the edited version was on ESPN 2. Ah. Yeah, I saw that. But no. I just watched it on ESPN Plus, so I didn't give a shit. So no, but I, I fully agree with that. I mean, Rodman... Rodman and Pippen, back in the 90s, the 96, 7, and 8, were, is what made, like, it's funny, because everyone's like, oh, well, Le- like, because now you're getting the whole, oh, LeBron's the greatest. I go, I'm sorry. After seeing that, LeBron's, you're, you're fucked. Okay, he- okay, here's where I chime in here, with this LeBron thing, because one person's like, Oh, I have Kobe number one, then I have LeBron, then I have Jordan at three. I'm like, dude, no, dude. I was like, dude, are you a fucking idiot? All right, are you high? First off, lay off the weed. And lay off the dumb. Because, all right, number one, yes, Kobe was good. I'll, I'll give Kobe his props. I mean, I would probably have Kobe at three because. I do respect LeBron. I put LeBron at two because of what he did. And where everybody, where he's like, oh, well, Kobe, you know, went to a championship in his first four seasons. Yeah, he had Shaq. See, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You know, you know the difference. Hold on, hold on. He had Shaq in his prime. Right. The difference between Jordan, LeBron, and Kobe is Jordan is a legend who played legends. Look at the people Jordan played when they're like, oh, he had a fight and claw and he couldn't get there because he didn't have the guys. Jordan came in to the NBA his rookie season when Larry Bird and Magic Johnson were at their height. Yep. And then going through Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, then Isaiah Thomas and the Pistons had their time in the sun. Then and, finally, and Jordan Rodman. John and Rodman out of that. <laughs> Yeah, then, right, then, and Lambeer, then Jordan, yeah, yeah, then Jordan had Scottie Pippen, and when they finally got Phil Jackson, they finally got over the hump, and who did they have to beat? Not only Isaiah Thomas and the Bad Boy Pistons, then, uh, 
they had to beat. Well, they also had to beat Larry and the Celtics in the same season. I mean, the same playoffs. And then in the NBA Finals, they had to beat the team of the 80s, the Golden Boys, the Lakers. Yeah. The Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar Lakers. My my favorite line is still when, the, I think it was the 91 playoffs, where they were the eight seed. Freaking Larry Bird, after Jordan drops, like I think it was like 42, Larry Bird just goes, that wasn't a man, that was Jesus. <laughs> yeah, and then, then there was a 63-point game next. Yeah. And here's my thing, like... I always said Jordan was the greatest ever to do it because his impact is still felt upon the game now, and he's been out the league, what, 16, 17 years? Yeah, uh, he's the first uh, battle. Oh, two. Oh, too. two. He was the, right, the big, right. The biggest thing, the biggest thing was Jordan. The biggest difference, because everybody was like, oh, well, LeBron, da, 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 LeBron, LeBron's a great teammate, that. Yes, LeBron's a team player. Jordan was an assassin. Here's the thing. Yeah, and that's why, you know what? Look, it's no knock on LeBron, but LeBron doesn't have what I call killer mentality. Like, he won't take a game over like that because he would rather facilitate. And if if there's any player you want to compare LeBron to, he's a modern-day Magic Johnson. That's the way I look at it. I thought you were going to say something. Here's my thing. But here's my thing. LeBron... LeBron, see, LeBron's been in the league how long? 16, 17 years, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he's still at the top of his game. He may not be in his prime necessarily, but he's more, he's a smarter player, I think, um, now at this point of his career. But the way I view it, I lost a little bit of respect for LeBron. Game three of the NBA Finals, 2018, Golden State against Cleveland. There were so many instances in that game when LeBron James had six foot three, 195 to 197 pounds Steph Curry on him. And Steph is a defensive liability. He's not the greatest no. defender. <laughs> and there were times when LeBron had the ball on the block where when Steph was defending him with his back to the basket, LeBron. And LeBron's kicking out. It's like, yo. Take the take the snake's head off. Jordan would have done that. Bryant would have done that. So many other players would have done that. But he 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 just doesn't have that aggression in him when it matters most. And then yeah, and then and, you know just him switching off on Durant when Durant hit that shot in, in the in the same three where he hit it in the same spot where he hit it the year before in Game Three. So. It's just like, man, LeBron is great. Don't get me wrong. I think LeBron's an all-time great. But this documentary, to me, just showed that LeBron is nowhere near Jordan's league. And if anybody if anybody deserves the comparisons to Michael, it's Kobe. Period. Here's the, the difference. All right, the difference between LeBron, Kobe, Jordan, the reason why Jordan was such an assassin is right here. Jordan was cut from his high school team. What was his junior year? Yeah. He was cut. Think about this. The greatest basketball player of all time was cut from his high school team, his junior year. And ever since then, he let his, he has had that coach's cut and he has used that cut. that The, the fact that he was cut from his high school team Fuel him. And then anything else, he just constantly fuels. It's just constantly more fuel where all of a sudden it's like, you don't believe in me. You don't do this. Well, you know what? Fuck you. I'm going to show you I am the greatest ever. That or he makes up a story. I mean, think about it. Even after he beat Magic, then he had Clyde. Then he had to take on Claude. He had Patrick in the Knicks. You know, Sean Reg- Kemp, Gary Reggie, and, Reggie and in the Sonic. Yeah, Reggie, Reggie and the Miller, Miller and the Pacers. Pacers. Yeah, Whitrick Smith. There. I was getting there. Whitrick Smith. Carl, Carl Malone, John Stockton and the Jazz. Charles Barkley and Kevin Johnson and the Suns. Like, he had... You know what? Basically, yeah. he, was the, so... he, was, he was a serial killer playing in a league full of assassins. And he was, you know, what's crazy? Top you, guy. 
You know what's crazy? That Portland series, I think that's where he was the most motivated because wasn't Clyde taken before Mike in the eighty four yes. draft? Yes. Clyde Portland. Thanks, Matt, I'm gonna show I'm gonna show the Blazers that man. Yes, yeah, Sam Bowie, remember? Yeah, the greatest thing ever, the yep. shrug. It was the shrug game where he literally says to Magic while playing poker, I'm going to light this team up. All of a sudden, seven threes. Later, he just shrugs it off. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I don't know. What? Yeah, because I mean, I'm on a roll. Like he would use anything. He would use anything to do that. And also, that was the defense. And he's like, well, i got to repeat now. And remember... People had the Bulls losing to the Blazers because, like, oh, Clyde Drexler is so good. And da 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 da. And Jordan's like, oh, oh, really? Oh, okay. Here's the other thing, too. And this and is the thing. You know what else? You know what else I learned throughout this documentary is that Draymond Green couldn't shit on Charles Barkley's toilet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Whoa, a... Hold on. I'll, I'll, I'll get the Draymond. I'll get the Draymond. <laughs> See, Draymond Green, I think out of out of some of the players I think that could play back then, I think Draymond Green would be one of them. Because if you put him you put him and his skill set in the eighties, and with an eighties mindset, which means he'd be hard and tough. He reminds okay, me you know of who he kinda you know who he kinda he kinda reminds me a little of He's a mix of a Dennis Rodman who can score, yep. and he's a mix of a little bit of Ben Wallace. I wouldn't even say a I would really. Here's the thing: I wouldn't say Rodman on score because I got into an argument on your on the page about this because that was a whole thing about Draymond Green being a Hall of Famer. I go, he is a modern day Dennis Rodman. He is a modern day cool. Dennis Rodman. He, but here's the thing: even if you don't count scoring, because apparently someone decided to say, "Oh, he only scored eight points a game." I go, "Well, yeah, wasn't he grabbing fifteen to twenty rebounds a game, though?" <laughs> and also, it's called the Basketball Hall of Fame. You also have to factor in what he did in college. And let's face it, he was he didn't the star. Do shit in college, really. Yeah, he did. Oh, at MSU, yeah, he did. Well, I'll also yeah, put it this way. Bad. College. Well, put it this He's way. He's fat okay. now. Um, when did, <laughs> all right, all right. The 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 one the the finals the Cavs got the the sorry the finals the Warriors lost to the Cavs. What was one of the big points of why they lost? Uh, Who was suspended? Yeah, Draymond. Draymond. Draymond Green. But here's the other thing too, and LeBron this is where James even came out and said it. LeBron James even came out and said the loss to Draymond Green was. Monumental. Yeah. yeah, it was, but see, the one thing that pissed me off about that was Draymond kicked somebody in the nuts two rounds ago before that, you know, he he kicked him in the groin, then he kicked Steven Adams in the groin. Kicked him in the groin. LeBron. Kicked also, him in the groin. LeBron. I, I yeah. know, but I know they're, they're protecting LeBron. Yeah. Yeah. But here's the thing, too. All right. The difference... All right, hold back, on, hold on. Back with, right, back with the last thing. That's what I was about to go with. And, uh, but, the bullying. But hold on. The one thing I wanted to say is, too, the big, a big difference between Jordan and LeBron was LeBron really never made anybody that he was with better. They were already either yeah. good... They went, Who? Hold on. Who? Anthony Davis. Okay, you, I was going to say, if you said something, if you said anyone else, I would have been like, but here's the thing. who Jordan make better? Uh, there's a laundry list of people Jordan made fucking better than because of how he practiced, the, how he played the game. I'm sorry, yeah, but... The bu well, the bullying, the bullying was his competitive nature. I mean, if you're going to practice with an assassin and a guy who wants to be the best no matter what, that it has that is driven to that point where he, he needs to be the best player of all time, and you pussyfoot practice. Of course, you're gonna get shit from him, and and also he needed to see if you were on his level. He needed to see if you were going to ride or die with him, because he wa Jordan wanted foxhole guys, and if but, you weren't a foxhole guy, you got shut out. But also, what didn't help guys like LeBron was he's in Cleveland. He has nobody. Good. He made a final got smoked out by the damn Spurs. 
next year, I'm going out to South Beach. He didn't ask well, to get anybody. He didn't. 18. But I'm saying he didn't stay and was like he didn't ride or die with one team. I know nowadays it's a little different because you can go with the free agency and all that. But I bet you if he sat there and said, "I want to stay here five years, give me a contract, but you got to get me people," they would have gotten them people, or people would have came and played in Cleveland. He ran to fucking South Beach. Let's not kid ourselves. The thing is, Jordan, also, LeBron could have stayed in Cleveland if he wanted to. Because remember, when Jordan did it, it, I mean, still was free agency. But it was a little different. What was, Jordan, was... what was Jordan doing ever since the third, ever since that third championship when he came back? What was he doing? One year contract. One yeah, year one year contract. contract one yeah. year contract. One year contract. Well, I, th- I wonder how much that had to do with... Um... If he was really looking to go back to play baseball with those one year contracts. No. It was one year contract. It was started out one year contract. Let me see what it is. Then yeah. all of a sudden, like, you know, the Bulls are like saying, you know, you're way, way, way underpaid. We can't afford you. We can't afford you. So Jordan's like, well, give me a one year contract. That way you can afford me. Yeah. And so and then it kept going one year contract, one year contract, one year contract. Yeah, Jordan did that so the Bulls could stick together and they can get pieces. Because if it was just him and he wanted that money, of course he wouldn't have had it. Yeah, no. Of course he wouldn't. The Bulls wouldn't able to wouldn't have been able to keep him. Or if they did, they'd have to get rid of Pippen and Robin and everybody else. Well, Pippen but, decided to do a seven year, like an idiot, a seven year freaking deal. Well, at the time, it was a lot of money. How was he to know inflation was going to go up? No, but he... Uh, seven years was just... It just seems, even now, it seems like it's way too much. Even now, they're only yeah, doing was, five years, but it's like, dude, you shouldn't have gotten... You could have probably gotten a little bit more, but you shouldn't have signed seven years. Even even the owner said... That, even his agent said it was a bad deal. You know why he did that, right? Oh, well, yeah, back surgery. Hey, I'm playing with Jordan, we're winning. Why not? He also had back surgery. Yeah, and there you go. So, but Jordan kept doing one year, one year, one year, making sure the team was... I hate when people go, oh, Jordan wasn't a good teammate. You kidding me? Jordan Oh no, Jordan made his guys want to play better. Yeah, but that's the thing. I think that's what I'm saying. Jordan was a great teammate because Jordan made everybody around him better. Yeah, yeah, um... The one thing I will say about Jordan and LeBron, that's definitely true. Like, LeBron's made teams around LeBron, – LeBron has made overall teams better. I will say that much because LeBron left Cleveland the first time. Cleveland was a lottery pick each and every year. He comes right. back. They're in the finals all four years he's there. He's, he's always you know, the missing piece. Last year, his first year, his first year with the Lakers – he, he he had them, I think, second or third in the West, and then he gets hurt. Then this year, you know, he's been healthy relatively for most of the season, and he, he and they're first in the West before everything got shut down. I mean, it's different eras. You know, Jordan, you see the Jordan, Kobe, LeBron debate each and every week, um, and quite frankly, it's really not a debate. It's for me, it's Jordan one, it's Kobe two, and then at number three for me, it's Kareem. Like Kareem to me doesn't get the respect he deserves as a legend. I mean, he was dominant in college and he continued that dominance in the NBA. I think he won six rings in the NBA, if I'm not mistaken. Is and it, you barely it, Yeah, you barely hear about it. I was gonna say, isn't Kerr the only four Pete? Kerr's yeah, the only player to win four in a row. No one yep. no one ever brings that up because Kerr was a role player, but again, isn't he, he only, was a role player. But he's the only one to win four in a row. That's still insane. Yeah, but like you said, he was a role yeah, player. Yeah, he, like, he fit. He fit he he was that's the one thing. Chicago had the pieces where they needed to be. The 98 team, I'm sorry, I still remember being in, uh, this is the funny part, I remember being in fucking Sears 
every in the electronics section when I was eight years old with my parents. Because I think they were buying, I forget what they were buying, but the jor- the freaking, because it was a one o'clock game against the Knicks. <laughs> it, it was like, and Jordan, was, and it was like one of the best off, it was like a buzzer beater that they did. But again, that's how I'm dating myself. Fucking Sears is not around anymore. And what playoff game is ever a one o'clock playoff game? But that's what I'm saying. Jordan was Jordan was the man. And no matter what Jordan did, you people dropped what Jordan was actually the best way to describe it. Jordan was pop culture. And the thing is he was pop culture without Jordan was so popular with pop culture and the reason why is because of his game and because of his look. And because of what happened, it, he didn't have to. He didn't have to uh, hype himself on social media. There was no social media. Yeah. I mean, he did it the old school way. He just played. He played and let his play do the talking, and that was that. And that's what made him such an icon. Yep. Then the shoe. <laughs> yeah. Then the shoe. Like John, what? 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 Well, what? well the shoe is nothing without the game. Right. He didn't have. Game, the shoe is nothing. Yeah. John, what what's your opinion on all this? You've been quiet. Well, it's like I said before to you when I told you when you had mentioned this. I never was a big basketball fan. But like everybody else in pop with popular culture, I knew who Jordan was. I knew who Rodman was. I knew who Pippen was. I knew who, uh, what's his name, the coach's name was. Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson. I mean, I know who these people were. I heard, I heard of every time I would turn on the news and turn on the sports, first thing was, Michael Jordan and the Bulls this, Michael Jordan and the Bulls that. The Bulls scored this many points. I mean, the guy was an icon. I'm sorry. You had to live under a rock to not know who the hell Michael Jordan was. I mean, was. if you get... Let me put it to you this way. My mother, who's not a sports person, I mentioned Michael Jordan. She goes, that basketball player guy, right? She, I mean, even she knew this. And she's a, she, I mean, she, she didn't say anything negative, but it's like she knew who he was. You had, Like you said, you had to have been living under a rock not to know who the hell Michael Jordan was. You know, and I got that. And I got, and through my years, I had gotten a chance to meet Rodman. I think the guy's a douchebag. But that's just because that's who we, the person, not the ball player, the person. Like he's a oh, coach. there's as one a thing. As a basketball that... player, as a basketball player, he was amazing. As there's... a person, that's different. There's one thing I would also want to say is the uh, one of the last episodes, they start ripping on the fact that Rodman, towards the end of his career, went to WCW to work. When Miss Skip practice and went to WCW. We all remember the feud that they did with Diamond Dallas Page and the NWO and Carl Malone. Yeah. Now there's the key factor. Everyone bitched about Rodman being there. No one fucking said a word about Malone being there. You know why? Because Malone didn't show up until after the finals. No, wasn't it during the finals that he showed up? No, it was after. No. Was it after? After. after. I thought he showed up during. No, because I remember that promo. Robin's like, I just came from four days of winning another championship because that's what we do in the NWO. And Hogan's like, yeah, brother. And then Malone came out. Okay. All right. The other question is, I have to have your honest opinions. Pizzagate. Food poisoning. Alcohol or the flu? What the hell you he said it was pizza. Do you, food poisoning. But do you believe yeah, it? it but do you believe poisoning. it? I'm saying he says it's food poisoning. Do you believe that? What well, it's pretty shady when no five guys you're... deliver a pizza. That's what I mean, though. Yeah. It does, does, it, I mean, do you buy that fucking story? John, what we're saying is, so, the flu game. Is Jordan, Jordan came down with the alleged flu and was like sitting on the in side Utah. In, in Utah uh, for, before the final uh, during what, what was it game three of the finals 
but he yeah. was he was like dehydrated, sweaty, and everyone thought it was flu-like symptoms. Now the documentary comes out, and he's saying it's food poisoning. That five, like that's the thing. You're saying five people, even though there were two people apparently at the pizzeria, because the guy that was the cook apparently came out on the radio and said that he never touched the fucking pizza. Or he made the pizza. He didn't do anything to the pizza. Which means the other guys did it. But at the same time, too, even the, even even in the 90s, five guys going to someone's room to deliver a pizza, don't that look a little shady? Even when you have Michael's bodyguards... Yeah, especially like, and especially like, it's in Utah, and they know who this is. So, well, the that... delivery guy's like, all right, well, let's do a little something, make him sick, and he can't play, and it's an easy win for Utah. Toop. Yeah. That was the reasoning behind it. They didn't think that Jordan would have, you know. The, one of the, the best games ever. The holidays are ridiculous. <laughs> The ridiculous cojones. Because one thing, it's definitely not the flu. Because if it's the flu, he would have had it through game six and through games four, five, six, and seven. Yeah. Which he did not. No, it was... It, it was yeah. food stop poisoning because he said he threw up. He was throwing up all that. Then he was dehydrated. And the next day he was fine. Some That's people are flu. some people are also <laughs> saying... Some people are also saying that it was due to a... a a, a wicked hangover. Which, with how Jordan used to drink, <laughs> that's not impossible but either. You, you don't get a two-day hangover. And Jordan may have drank, but he didn't drink that much, <laughs> especially before a game. On the day after a game, before a game, he didn't drink that much. Guarantee about that, especially if he cares about his career, yeah. which he did. Yeah. So... And also, again, if, you, if you're hungover, you're only hungover. The most you're ever hungover, if you're hungover, is like you're hungover for maybe half a day. How many times can you go? Got... Half a day to three quarters a day. God damn half it. How many times can you say day. hangover? <laughs> right. Um, I've had day. hangovers that have lasted longer than that. Yeah, I've had hangovers, that, I've had hangovers that lasted a day. Okay, I've had hangovers a day. that lasted me at least two days. <laughs> See, I've never heard of a two-day hangover. Oh, uh, you 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 were drinking. Well, I mean, you were also drinking to get rid of the hangover. Then you got the hangover again. So technically, <laughs> okay. So it's not really a two-day hangover. It's a one-day hangover, but you drank again, so you got another hangover. Well, let me put it this way: I used to drink pretty damn heavy back in the day. It's a blur. <laughs> it's a blur. Oh yeah, a lot of a lot of my thirties. And early 40s were a blur. <laughs> Damn. Far out, man. <laughs> oh, no. Not even close. Uh, uh, yeah, so, all right. So, I think it's food poisoning. What do you think, Christian? Um. Yeah, I think it's food poisoning as well. Uh, yeah, for, for so long, the game was always known as the flu game. Um, but I'm with you. I, I think it was it was food poisoning, but it really didn't seem to do much because he scored what thirty eight, thirty nine points in that game. So yeah. he did what he could. Yeah, because I heard food poisoning knocks you completely out. I heard you don't even want to get out of bed. It's that bad. Oh yeah. I remember he said he slept most of the day. True. He threw up that night, yeah. and then he slept up most of the day. He still felt like shit. They were drinking and all that. He was keeping stuff down. He was keeping the Gatorade and stuff down, but he was still exhausted. Like you right. are when you throw up your guts. Dude, the amount of sweat that he... Yeah, exactly. Like, he was... I mean, think about it. When you have diarrhea and you have the shits, I'm talking about not like one like massive shit session. I'm talking the shits, like two to three. The next day, you're dehydrated. Oh, and yeah. you're tired. Right. You're fucking exhausted. After, after you have... 
Right. After you throw up at, if you wake up in the middle of the night and you throw up, say around like two or three and you have that vomit session, you're, you're dead for the day. Oh yeah. Yeah. Whatever you thought about going to work, you can forget about. <laughs> you know, it's like your day, your day is, your day is over before it even fucking starts. Your yeah, day. it's like, uh, dude, you might as well put on your Xbox or PlayStation or Brewway Prior or Netflix and chill. Your day is atta- that or it's a day it's attached to a porcelain throne. Yeah, it's not Netflix and chill. It's Netflix and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Net- Netflix and well, spill. It's Netflix and spill. <laughs> I like mine better, Netflix and shit. That's where you make that, sure you have that bathroom right next to where your room is. Or you just bring your fucking phone and watch Netflix while you're on the can. Oh god. <laughs> but but then yeah, but then your legs fall asleep. No, that's what that's where that's where the term binge comes in very <laughs> Yeah, binge. <laughs> yeah. <Ugh>. Binge. <laughs> no, I mean, come on, Christian, you've done that before, right? Where you've taken a shit and all of a sudden you've been on the can so long your legs freaking like Fall asleep. Of course, that's why I bring my phone. I call it. I call it TNS, text and shit. That's why I bring that's my where, phone with. Me. That's where you. Turn, no, that's no. where you turn into fucking Murtaugh from Lethal Weapon when he went into the bathroom and he had the bomb on the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like, I can't. I can't get up. Why? Well, first, there's a bomb on the toilet. Shit, my legs are starting to fall asleep. You got to get me off this toilet, man. So his legs were asleep. Yeah. Yeah, when you wait, dude, it's the worst. Have you ever tried to get up when your legs are fully asleep? Oh, full yeah. on, full on dead leg? Hell yeah. That's where you're like, and yeah. I'm out. <laughs> that, that's where you sort of roll. That's where you do this roll, like especially if there's a bathtub by your toilet. You sort of roll basically almost into the tub <laughs> and wait for your legs the to fall. That's the way, the best thing I think I've ever heard the uh, food poisoning described is it's just the worst, ver- worst version of the stomach virus. Oh, yeah, completely. I had it once. I, went, I remember I went to Texas Roadhouse and I had this thing I never had before. And I had See, this problem number one. You got to stick to what you know. Yup. <laughs> yup. And, and all of a sudden, I'm like, I remember, I'm in the, I'm in the shower. Like, I got a headache. Well, you know, if you have a headache, you have to take a, sh- you can take a shower, and it sometimes helps because you get the right. hydration to you. Because sometimes it's a dehydration headache. And I'm like, oh, I think I'm feeling good. All of a sudden, bleh. I'm like, okay, I guess I'm not. You know. Something like that happened to me last year. It was uh, the weekend of the Super Bowl, the New England um, Rams oh. Super Bowl. I had called in sick, literally. You guys are going to get a laugh out of this. I had called in sick to work because I just didn't feel like being there. I needed well, you my called dad. in shit. You um, called in shit. <laughs> in that, too. So me and my mom, we went out to this one uh, place. I had read some really good reviews about it. The name of the place was called Buttermilk breakfast place and the breakfast place is out by me they close early like they open probably at about seven and then they close at probably three three thirty why i don't know but i don't ask questions anymore <coughs> you know when you um at, after you eat you have that full feeling in your stomach and it usually goes away your food settles and it usually goes away after what a little bit of an hour well that wasn't the case with me um, I was, I felt very nauseous and I just felt like I was going to throw up at any given moment. <clears throat> then, um, I end up getting into the bathroom and I had just missed the toilet. Like I threw up everywhere oh. on me, on the floor, oh. like, yeah. And it felt like I had the bug. I like, to be honest with you, I felt a lot better after I threw up, you know, I took my shower and then I just, you know, I was slowly like drinking just liquids to stay hydrated and the next morning i woke up just fine so i don't know if it was just a stomach bug or whatever and usually when a place makes me sick that i eat at i really don't mess with them anymore so i decided to try them again and 
it messed my stomach up again. So that place is a crock of shit. <laughs> Dude, that's, that's like me a, with Indian food. I mean, it goes through me like a laser. I'm done. <laughs> you see, that's why I stay away from uh, rat burgers. I won't eat that shit ever again. Oh, dude, dude, McDonald's makes me sick all the time. I will not yeah, have a I burger from McDonald's. Yeah, we had to go to Burger King that one time because you didn't want to go to McDonald's. Yeah, you know what? Because if we did go to McDonald's, I would have been praying at your porcelain god for the whole the whole night. Uh, that's the way I am with White Castle, man. I can't eat that shit anymore. Oh, God, forget it. I just like, I eat White Castle. It's just like, you know what? Cancel my plans for the next hour and a half to two hours. Give me a phone. Give me about ten magazines. I'm camping out in the fucking bathroom. Dude, I, I, I remember in Louisville, Kentucky, because we were in Louisville, Kentucky, and three of our members of our band decided to go get White Castle. I'm like, no, I'm getting a pizza. Fuck you. <laughs> And they had the White Castle. They threw up an hour later and were playing this show and they look like death. Like, uh, I'm like, dude, drink some Gatorade. I don't want to drink some Gatorade. Trust me, the White Castle, the White Castle is dehydrated. You, you need the Gatorade. No, no, I, my stomach. I'm like, I know your stomach's going to feel like that. Drink the Gatorade. And then they drank the Gatorade, and around, like, I think near the end of the show, they started feeling better. I'm like, see, you need to keep hydrating after that. Yeah, yeah. I remember um, in 2013, my mom had um, bought steak, and so I just didn't feel right about my stomach. And, like, literally at midnight, I started throwing up, and I threw up throughout most of the day. And... Then my sister ended up catching it, and my mom ended up catching it. And it's like they were throwing up back and forth. It was almost like in symphony. Oh God! Yeah. yeah. Like, it was, yeah. And dur and during the the we're gonna call it now the the food poisoning game. What was Jordan drinking a ton of after Gatorade. every break? Gatorade. He was drinking Gatorade. Gatorade. Remember, remember, he had to come out. Remember he came out once, I think it was Bob Coster, so somebody like, Jordan just got taken to the staff. Oh, he just had to go to the bathroom. He'll, he, he'll be right back. <laughs> and Marv Albert, I even think, laughed at that point. He's like, oh, he's got to go. I missed like the, the water NBA boy. The water sucks. It really, really sucks, dude. <laughs> I, miss the N I miss the NBA on NBC. ABC just isn't the same. They brought, they're starting to bring it back. College, the NBA, college basketball. The NBA on NBC was the shit. Yeah, college like, basketball. You remember that, Christian. Well, you, oh, of course. Yo, you know, though, that N NBC just got college basketball. And guess what? Guess what the first thing they brought back was? What? The theme song from NBA on NBC. But it's, I'll it's tell you, the same I'll tell with college you guys, basketball. You need, hey, you need an NBA. Hey, you hear I'll that music, you though, that. you know basketball's on NBC. It doesn't matter what it is. You know it's on there. Yeah. I'll, say, I'll say this, man. To me, the best college basketball coverage is on CBS. There it is. I love it. Well, yeah, they're kind and, of the staple. when Vern Lindquist went away, when Vern Lundquist stopped doing it, they got Gus Johnson, which was even better. That, but I really like, I really like the broadcast team with Jim Nance, Gra uh, Bill Raftery, and Grant Hill. Because Ra even though oh, Raftery oh, is little, Jim Nance, Jim Nance, knowing that he could get rowdy. <laughs> hey yeah. Jim, you can yeah. go nuts here. Oh, I don't have to uh, do golf voice. Hi friends, Jim Nance here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey. <laughs> Chip. Yeah, like you could tell when you could tell how lively he is when he does college basketball. It's like, hi, hi, everybody, Jim Nance here. Like, yeah. Oh my god! Or, or when you go to the Masters, the coffee. Or when you go to the Masters, hi friends, welcome to the Masters in Augusta, Georgia. Hello, friends. Jim hi, Nance, Grant, yeah. Grant Hill, Bill Raftery, Tracy Wolfson. He, yeah. uh, Jim Nance doing tennis. Huh. It's like Jim Nance turning to Bob Ross. Hi, friends. How are you? 
It's like, Jesus Christ, Jim. See, the the NFL, like Jim Nance tries to be tries to be um excited, and then the NFL tells him like, yeah, we got old people watching. Be boring. Okay. Nah. Hey I Tony, think how about that about, play? And then Tony's I, like, honestly, oh my god. And then he gets Jim Nance going again. I think he's just trying to match the intensity. He he definitely meshes better with Tony than he did with Phil. Like Oh, because Phil I, was boring. Yeah, yeah, he was. You're a Giants fan. I was a Giants fan at that time. Phil Sims is boring. He is boring. Do you hey, think Phil Troy Aikman is boring? Uh, well, you know, uh, well, we tried to do this on first down. We tried to pass the ball, but we ran the ball. And and then and then a, then it threw a little bit and it threw pretty good, yeah. But we ended up winning the game, and, and the whole time you were, yeah, yeah. Basically, it wasn't like, hey Dan, how was that game? They dropped a lot of my fucking passes. Leave me alone. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but, it's funny, man. It's. Yeah, do you all right, so let me ask you guys this. Do you think that we will have either an NFL season or college football? NFL, yes, college football no. Yeah, wow. I, I well depends. I uh, I said this we said this before before you came on. I think if you can go with no fans to start and your end goal is to get fans in the stands safely, like if there's a vaccine or something like that, you will get college football. Pros, yes. But if you can't do it, you won't, we're not going to get college football. Because the NCAA basically said no stand, uh, no schools open equals no stands equals no football. Yeah. But then the NCAA said if you want to play – Fine, we wash our hands of it. Which basically is saying, like, whatever happens, whatever risks you occur, incur, whatever whatever things that consequences happen, it's on you. You can't get us for anything. Yeah, um, I can see the NFL being played. If they do play college, I don't think they'll have fans in the stands. And that'll hurt. And that's the, my biggest problem with that. Is colleges have outright said that if there are no fans in the stands, then it, they're looking at a huge loss, and that could possibly end certain other sports, like mostly female sports, women's sports, for the next like two to four years. And that is shitty. That, oh, we're going to play college football, but everything else, every other sport is going to get cut. That is shit. That yeah, is this fun. is gonna be this is gonna be interesting the way it pans out because um, the NFL they're presuming as if they're gonna have a season. Yeah, the NFL I think can play. Well, the thing is also the NFL is looking into like N95 masks for the face mask. Mm -hmm. So every player has to wear that and. You know, if they can do that without having any problems or N95 filters for the face masks, which I am perfectly fine with. If they can, like I said, if they can do it safe, then do it. See, that's, My that's... biggest problem with when Ronnie said that Universal Studios is opening up for the NBA playoffs. If there's any sport right now that you can't play during a pandemic, it is basketball. Because you uh, they're not going to wear a mask. You sweat on top of each other, so chances are, also saliva. You know, like somebody goes, you're next to somebody. You're ne you're next to somebody. You're sweating. Fluids are transferred on someone's body. They are. There's no way around it. You're sweating. I'm sweating. If I'm guarding you, which means I'm playing up close. Chances are, eventually, you're going to have some sweat or even some of my saliva, whatever, on your body. It's disgusting to think about it. But then, also, if anybody does have it, you know, like, players sometimes spit <laughs> and they, um, you know how they'll spit on the floor and then they just rub their foot on the thing so it runs into the, into the floor? 
You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Now, yeah, bas- you guys, basketball is not the most hygienic sport either. <laughs> now, do you guys see baseball being played, or would you just cancel that as a whole I, at this point? I, I see. Oh, it oh John, uh, John, John says cancel. John says I see yeah. it being played in some form. But again, it all matters if if they can do it safely. That's really where it all comes down to. I can see I them think... doing something if they can do it safely. I think the owners fucked up any chance when they tried to pull that extra pay cut shit and then the MLB players flipped out about it. I think we're going to know something and by now, next yeah, week. And now the players are saying, well, we want our full money now because they just reneged on one deal. So now the players are saying, fuck you. Chris, I'm going to make a bold statement. I guarantee you by next Friday, we're going to have an answer if we're having a season or not. And I'm willing to put money on it. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. I was going to say, I'll take, willing, I'll take whoop. that bet. I'll take that bet in about two seconds because I bet you they're going to play in some way or form if it's an 80-game season. To, I'm willing to – I'm just willing to I'm, – I'm predicting that it's, that it's, that it's just not going to happen. See, it's just not going to happen. The biggest problem with team sports right now is that is a ton of testing. And how does that look when people, normal people, can't get a test? Well, that's the other thing. Well, too. athletes are going to get, you know, like 15 tests in a month. See, here's the thing. The other thing is, too, is we're all speculating this of today. We don't know what the fuck's going to happen in, in July. We don't know what's going to happen throughout middle of June. It could be, it's not going to get 100% better, but it could drop dramatically in Two, two, three weeks. It's not going to magically go away. No, it's not going to magically go away, but it can drop dramatically to a point where they can do it safely and they can do tests or testing. They might get better testing in two, three weeks. We, we don't, here's the thing. We're speculating. We don't know. No one knows. It could be worse. It could be better. Who the fuck knows? But I mean, as of right now, you can only do what you're, what you're reading. That's the thing. We could have better testing. Yeah, we could have better no, testing. No, sh- sh- I know where you're no, going No, no, you know we could have better testing? Use the international one. If we actually use the same damn test they use all over the world. Instead of saying, oh, we're America, we'll make our own. Dumb fucks. And the reason why he did that is so if they had a test that worked, they could market it. Mass produce it. Um... Mass produce it, market it, and then all of a sudden, oh, let's get a share of the cut. When you shouldn't be thinking about that. You should be thinking about, we got a test. We need to get people, you know, we need to get people healthy. Not, oh, let's mass produce the shit out of it and make a killing. That's the problem with the vaccine. That's why I sort of hope that a micro, that one of Bill Gates things gets it. Because if he gets it, he's going to mass produce it. And he's going to give it away free. Well, the only problem with Bill Gates is, and I hate this, I hate to say this, uh, where's his medical license? He, see, he doesn't. See, he's not saying, "Oh, I'm coming up with it." No, he basically had he bought a ton of facilities and has licensed medical professionals working on the vaccine, where he just gives them the money, and. His medical licensing giving money is pretty goddamn good. <laughs> but anyway, let's not go back into this. I don't think we have anything else to talk about. Let's close All right, talk to out. Christian about the goddamn uniforms. I want to know oh. what he thinks about that. Oh, yeah. So what well, you it? guys talk about that. I'll be right back. I got to go take a mess. Okay. All right, what's going on now? So we'll close it out with this because right. you haven't you, heard this. You saw, all right. All right, well, you, first you saw the Rams' new uniforms, right? The Best Buy ones? Yep. Dude. The Best Buy ones. Motherfucker. <laughs> well, they, uh, they look like Best Buy, but the thing is, they look good. Yeah. Dude, that oh, helmet man. looks sweet. The best uniforms, the best uniforms I saw are those Charger ones. Oh, yeah. But, you see, my thing, what I like about the Rams' uniform is that blue chrome helmet. Yeah. It is about time the NFL started putting some chrome in that shit. 
Because that looks hot. I, I'm, I'm, I'm like, now I just want an Eagles green chrome helmet. Badly. Okay. So, I got it pulled up right now. So, right. they did a <laughs> top 100 greatest uniforms in history. In sports history. So, we just went over 10, 10 to 1 uh, at the beginning of the show. Yeah, and I ripped apart most of them. So, number 10 is currently Croatia's uniform for soccer. You know, like the checkerboard pattern? Okay. That's a no, and that's no, a who he's gives on, a fuck. He's on mute. He muted himself. Uh, oh. I'm back. My bad. Yeah. Did you hear there what I said? Did you hear what I said? I, I did didn't not hear actually. Okay, so I didn't hear anything. Either. So at the beginning of the show, and we'll close it out with this because I want your opinion. We want your opinion on this. Um, they did a top 100. Uh, the score did a top 100. Uh, uh, uniforms in hit sports history. Best uniforms in sports history. So I'll, we'll go over 10 to 1 because this is what we went over with today. So this is the top 10 best uniforms in sports history. And number 10 was Croatia's uniform, their current soccer uniform. Do you know like the checker pattern? That's a no. Right. That's number 10. Number nine was the 1960 San Diego Chargers. So the powder blue with the white lightning bolt down the uh, down the pants. So basically, what they had during Ladanian Tomlinson's yes, run. the white helmet with the black the black number on it. Yeah, uh, n- number eight, the Chicago Blackhawks, their current uniform. Hmm. Huh. But the Chicago Blackhawks have had the same damn uniform, what, since, but like, they, the 70s? But they, were, they also... Yeah, they, nothing has really but, changed. But they've also counted, like, alternates and stuff like that. The only thing that's changed is now they have a black helmet they have to wear, or a red helmet they have to wear. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you... They're, they counted alternate uniforms, too. So, they didn't... That they're, that's why they're saying the current. They're not counting any alternates they might have put in there. Uh, the current or the, the... Yeah, the current San Francisco 49ers uniforms is number seven. <laughs> yep. Number six. And this is where Chris lost it. Notre Dame. I mean, I'm happy Notre Dame's in the top 10, but they should have been higher because you can't go wrong with the classic. And that gold dome, oh my God, that gold dome helmet is beautiful. Yeah, that'll never get old. Number five, the 1980s LA Lakers. Yeah, because that's what their uniforms kind of look like now. They kind of bought that look back. Yeah. Yeah. The Showtime Lakers. Showtime Lakers. Number four, the 90s North Carolina basketball. The Tar Heels. There we go. Finally. Got some Tar Heel action. Number three, the New York Yankees. Of course. Duh. But not num- but number three? <coughs> yeah, they should definitely be number one. Well, wait until you hear what the number one. Wait until you hear what the number one is. Number two. If it is what I think it is. I'm hanging up on you. Hold on. Say it. What do you think it is? If it's the Red Sox, I'm hanging up. Okay, no, no, no. no. Okay, good. Might be worse. Uh, number two, the Canadians, the Montreal Canadiens. Which is bullshit. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> and number I'm one. Sorry, that is bullshit. And number one, the <laughs> Las Vegas Raiders. Yeah. Yeah. No. I'm sorry. Besides, I, I, I said besides the Chargers in like good looking uniforms. I guess uh, this might be biased. I would go with the Eagles home green or the black jersey with the green pants. 
Because they were hot? Yeah. Because it always looks good. Or I would go, uh, I can't do it because them pants were hideous. What, the shamrock? I, I, no, no, no. I, no, I was going to go with the 90s New England pa- with the early 90s <sighs> New England Patriots. But them pants were hideous. Like the white helmet and the red jersey, yes, but them pants were hideous. Uh, the Flyers, the current oh. Flyers, the current Flyers were 46. The fly- All right, where are the Eagles on this thing? I'm looking. The, oh, you ready for this? The current Bulls, 42. Mm, 90s Bulls have been on there. Did the Mets black uniforms make the list? I have no? not. I have not found it yet. It probably did, but they were high. They're probably really high on the list. All right, where, where, where's the Philadelphia Eagles on this list? Because they have to be on this. Because they've oh, had some fifty-six fucking... is the Sox. Okay, the Sox. The Sox. I don't know. I gotta search through because I I didn't even. I haven't found. I haven't found them yet, and I really don't want to spend all... The Falcons is 90 Suns. Oh, you wanted the 80s Broncos. They were 84. Dude, the 80s Broncos with that D helmet were awesome. They kind of brought that look back a little bit for their alternate... um, And they looked so much better than their normal shit. When I saw that, even with a darker blue but with the stripe and the d i'm like dude just throw that other shit out well i found the seven i found the 70s eagles uniforms the, all right so they show no love to the 2000s well, huh? wait, so uh 71 is the uh 70s eagles oh oh with the white helmets, they were disgusting. Uh, no, the green with the with the wings, the the the, the Papali eagles. Dude, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The current eagles right now are so much better than half the shit you listed. There's a reason why they have my selling jerseys. Again, not my list. Yeah, who made this? The score. Fuck the score. The score don't know shit. They put fucking Czech Republic. Who gives a flying fuck about soccer in America? First off, you fucking morons. Nobody. Nobody gives a shit about soccer in America. 35 was Penn State. 35 was Penn State. Okay, Oregon? Oregon was like 47. I right, fuck them already because Oregon has had some sweet ass uniforms. Dude, you you ready for this? This is how you know how bad this is. The twenty five, the Miami Heat, their current alternates. All right, where are the Philadelphia seventy sixers? And I have to wonder which ones. Oh, you got to give me time. It's they're they're on here, but I forget which ones. Because if they say the nineties Philadelphia seventy sixers, this list is already shit. Because they are one of the worst uniforms in sports ever. You know the ones that I'm talking about, Christian? I do. The ones that say Sixers and they had the trail of stars all over the place? Yep, I remember those. Oh, not, not the Iverson ones. The black ones were cool. But the ones that looked like somebody seriously just screen printed them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, they were the they were the uniforms where Charles looked at this and was like, "Yeah, I'm out." <laughs> you knew as soon as Charles wore one of those outfits, he was done the next year. The Phillies are seventy nine. Or yeah, Oregon football was seventy four. <laughs> Shit list. Uh, oh, all right, all right. here we go. Current Sixers. 64. Okay. Okay, all I got to say here is this. Your number one best looking team 
Where's their jersey sales always among fans? Shit, that's where. I mean, hell, jersey, even if you said it was what the... What jersey sell a lot more? Uh, New England Patriots, Philadelphia Eagles. Even if you One, said... Even if you said the 90s, or it was the 80s Raiders jerseys, even though that's the same one, at least then it would have been like, oh yeah, they got popular because of NWA. Marcus Allen. I'm fine with that. But as soon as I, oh, the Raiders. I'm like, oh, oh go fuck yourself. Oh, and they say the Vegas Raiders. They don't even say it's the Oakland Raiders. It's the Vegas Raiders. I'm like, oh, yeah, bye, bye. Yeah, yeah, that's... What about, I wonder where the Bears would rank on this list because I don't think the Bears uh, have really seven, changed up. Current, I think it was current was 73. <laughs> nah. Figured. Yeah. But, alright. I think, I think John's barely holding in there. Barely. <laughs> yeah, let, let's call it a night. Christian, thank you for coming. Yeah, this is actually the first night where I'm not tired of shit. Yeah. Well, you know you're always yeah. welcome on. Um, Definitely. Of yes, because uh, I want to talk some pro uh, football next week where we talk about stuff other than the virus, like some betting odds. We can have some fun with that. because yeah, I'll, I'll look at that because there's stuff about MVP and Dak Prescott that we should talk about. When we come back on next week. Absolutely. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that was the Nerd Zone on the Nerdport Network. You can follow us on Facebook at the Nerdport Network. Follow us on Twitter at F and Ronnie. At Trips NXC, and I'm going to go watch some NXT. And the Zombie Master. Christian, your Twitter handle or your follow me. At, you can follow me at Daily Blitz underscore sixty one. And Ooh. also go follow him at the World of Sports uh, Facebook page. On Facebook, obviously. I don't know why I said that twice, <laughs> but uh, also you can follow us on. You can also follow us on Patreon for new exclusive content. On there coming very soon. Our good old friend JP is coming back with a show. How'd you get back? How'd you get into wrestling? I will talk to you <laughs> off air about that, Chris. Hi, <laughs> hi, this is JP, host of How Did You Get Into Wrestling? <laughs> so, how'd you get into wrestling? And don't forget Monday, Ronnie. You're going to put in your thing for your movie on Monday. Well, I already put it in, but we'll talk about it. Yes. Monday from Real to Heal, we will be doing the reboot of a uh, a martial arts class. I, I wouldn't call it a classic, but it is a classic. Dude, but it is a classic. Dude, dude, it is a classic. It's Van fucking Dam, okay? <laughs> yes, Kickboxer, I believe it's Vengeance is the one. There's two yes, different kickboxer through vengeance because there's two different ones. There's a sequel to that one now. So yes, where Dave Batista plays Tong Po. Yeah, yes, because kickboxer originally was Van Dam avenges his paralyzed brother. This one's Van Dam beats the shit out of people wearing a fedora. Oh <laughs> uh, yes, but that, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that is our show. Follow us where we just. Where we just told you, by the way, the check just cleared, and guess what? Bobby Boni is still getting paid very soon. And a quick thing, quick, quick, quick. NFL, do not pump crowd noise in to empty stadiums for games. Do not. I want to hear all the sounds because the sounds of the game make the game. Fuck the. <sighs> I don't give a shit. No white noise. <laughs> and we are out. Good night, everybody.